Recording in progress. Good evening, everybody. I'll call this regular meeting of council to order for May the 7th, 2024. Resolve the agenda for the May 7th, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor uh, Wojciech, seconded by Councillor um, Bobbitt. The, uh, I recommend that we actually move the legacy committee agreement from 8.5 to 4.3 on the agenda, and the 4.3 will move to the 4.4. Get that? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so first we have receptions and delegations and hearings 4.1. Result this regular meeting, council be suspended and council open the public hearing for the 2024 financial plan. I call this hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to provide an overview of the 2024 financial plan and to allow any interested person to make representation, ask questions, or register an objection regarding the 2024 financial plan. I also request any person making representation to the hearing state his or her name and civic address. All right, so we shall begin, uh, Mr. Poole. Okay, I'm just going to get it up on the screen here. Everybody in the gallery can see uh, everything on the video. It's a uh, starry night with a tent. Yeah. Came prepared to ask questions too on the financial plan. Thomas, one of our budget. Okay. So we will begin our 2024 budget presentation. It'll just be some slides, and anyone uh, uh, can ask some questions if need be. So just starting with our, our schedule, we, we start in July, August administration, uh, submitting draft budgets to council by late fall. I know that we were delayed with bylaws this year, but council, just so you know, we'll be, we'll be dealing with that every committee as a whole until it's done uh, <coughs> due to the lateness this year. So our budget priorities, uh, maintain and review levels of service, Compared to pre previous years, uh, stick to principles laid out in our 23 to 28 strategic plan, uh, maintain and create additional self-sustaining infrastructure, and ensuring our financial resources uh, to participate in future federal, provincial, and municipal grant programs. So going on to our revenue. So our tax levy, that's the, that's the amount that our taxpayers pay, uh, just over five and a half million dollars. Other revenue consists of our fees, uh, grants, uh, and, and other charges that the town uh, has in our fee schedule, and 238,000 for transfers from our reserves for a total of 8.7 million dollars, just over. Uh, just to explain the education tax, the, the town has no responsibility in, in establishing the education levy, but it does account for 33% of the total tax levy from our properties. Uh, that amount is $2.787 million. So as it states, the province is going through a, a process over time to decrease the amount uh, the, the province or the municipality levies to pay for, for education. We don't know when that's going to hit zero. So property value tax relationship, we went through a growth of 1.02% from 23 to 24. As council just seen from the assessment branch, we're looking at closer to four next year, if things stay the way they are. But uh, the breakdown of that percent increase, 63% res residential, 36% commercial, 0.3% agricultural. 
and uh, taxes are calculated based on the provincial portioning system, 45% uh, for residential property, 65% commercial, and 26% agricultural. So time those, times those percents by your portioned assessment times the mill rate from council's expenditures, and you have the dollar amount paid in taxes. So just to show our, our rate of change on the levy, so this is not the municipal expenditure, this is the, the levy that we collect in taxes from our ratepayers over the past 10 years. Uh, as, as council sees in our budget, we, we try and get between 2.5 and 3.5%, so we're, we've been a little over, but uh, circumstances are. So just for some comparisons of uh, a value of $100,000 on a dwelling, uh, the assessed value, portion of assessment on $45,000, your monthly property tax is $133,000, and I've just listed some comparable, comparable prices uh, of other services. So it's included in other revenue is uh, our sales of service, so services provided by the town that we charge our residents and other users for 1.3 million, and collected grants 1.35 million for 2024, and other miscellaneous revenues 165,000. So I guess within the sale of service, there's the list of the contributing numbers. Our grants. That includes the ACSC from the province for the arena project and miscellaneous, including licenses, building permits, fines, etc. So, expenses just a bar graph showing all of our different departments uh, for the expenditure. We have to, it's uh, provincial law to provide the province with a balanced budget so our revenues equal our expenditures. So starting off in protective services, as you can see, police dominate that, uh, that line. Our fire contribution to the Swan Valley Fire Department, 350,000. So just to show the, the history of the RCMP costs in the town of Swan River, uh, we, we are going to substantially upward and that is no sign of changing the their CBA was a four percent increase for 24 and it will be a four percent increase in 25. Uh, recreation breakdown uh, the aquatic center 722,000 uh, the skating skating rink 487,000 veterans hall 117,000 Parks and playgrounds, just over 100,000, and the others listed for a total of one point, just over 1.6 million dollars in recreation. Uh, environmental health services, so that's the land, running the landfill, uh, collecting garbage, and providing recycling services to commercial and, and uh, residential properties. Uh, just under 1.2 million dollars. Transportation services, uh, just in general, our roads and streets, just over a million dollars. Handy transit, 13,000, and our contribution to the airport, 57,000 dollars. To break that down, uh, for the transportation services, there's a list of the detailed operation budget. The public works. So snow and ice removal that fluctuates. Uh, traffic services includes the signs, barricades, uh, our speed signs, and the school zones. Our general government breakdown uh, for administration: seven hundred fifty thousand, just under. Legislative, so that's council expenses: one hundred ninety-eight thousand. So keep going because we other other includes our damage claims and liability insurance 
and recoveries are the, the allocations of the payroll included in gov general government services that are charged to each account. So we, we get that back as a recovery. And miscellaneous expenses include uh, public health and welfare, 195,000 resource conservation. Uh, and I have some slides that will break these down but totally 3.36 million out of our 8.7 million dollar budget. So including public health and welfare services, the uh, cemetery operations, doctor recruitment, social assistance, uh, social organizations for a total of 196,000. Regional planning and de development is uh, grass cutting and weed control, planning and zoning, communities and bloom initiatives, uh, Christmas lights, <coughs> totaling 43,700. And resource conservation and industrial development is our development plan, our development incentive plan, our rise initiatives, Swan Lake Water District, they're all listed for 76,000. Am I going too fast? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Maybe explain like, a few of the other points, I guess. Like some of the heavier ones, I guess. Okay. Uh, well, this is a this is a heavy one. This uh, our debt obligations are something that council has to look at. Uh, municipal debt is really not a revenue tool. It's a, it's really a, a you know a financing tool available to municipalities, but it shouldn't be considered uh, to be used for revenue. Obviously, interest charges come with it. Our total debt charges for 2024 are just over 650,000. So those are just the costs of the, the current debt load that we have. <coughs> so our our 2024 budget includes two projects. Uh, that the town is going to be borrowing for, and that's 100000 for the column burying in the cemetery and 900000 for the fire pumper. That was included in last year's budget, but the process to purchase a fire truck is over two years, so it's very typical to see that in municipal budgets. And our current, current debentures right now, as of 2024, are listed. Uh, the maturity date the term end is listed next to it, so we will pay those amounts until those debentures mature. I, I see there is a question in the back, but I guess you, you can either come forward. I'm just forward. curious what a columbarium is. Uh, that's the, the granite housing that uh, has niches in it in the cemetery, as opposed to digging a grave or having the cremains in a underground. So like an established... Um, Go back three slides. Burial spot. Is that I've never heard that term for, before. So it's for urns. So we have urns. one out okay. there. Right there. So for any cremations. Perfect. I've the, never heard that term. The bottom right hand corner. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, the list of our uh, general debt, uh, the payments for those two projects will begin in 2025, so they're not on the 2024 budget. Uh, this is a graph showing the history of our general debenture, so this is not including the utility. Uh, just to show, uh, I believe, the list here. So those who don't know what a debenture is, it's like a bank loan or a, or a mortgage. Yeah, basically a municipality loaning money in order to get the project done as an adventure. Uh, included in, in or the reason for the jump in 2019, the projects include the Wellness Center building repair, the well control building, and the arena temporary floor repair was the reason for that jump. So our reserve contributions for 2024 Federal gas tax, 235 given from the federal government. Uh, machinery replacement, road improvement, recreational facility, major repairs, reserve, 
fire hall reserve, and a landfill closure reserve. So as you can see, we, we don't plan to put anything in our tax stabilization, crime prevention, or general reserves in 2024. We're totaling five, just under $580,000. So for utility services, starting with uh, our revenues, we have 1,625 service connections, uh, 216 hydrants, our water sales are 575,000, sewer sales, which are based on our water sales, 590,000, and administration service charge, $118,000. So again, we're required by the Public Utilities Board to have a balanced budget in the utility. So we have our revenues equaling our expenditures at $1.343 million. Our expenditures are budgeted at 636 in water, fiscal 369, sewer collection and disposal 241, administration 97. And there's no rate, no rate increase planned to be implemented in 2024. However, the study is budgeted to get done, so it's coming. Our utility debt consists of the West Main Street uh, water and sewer renewal, the well control building, Rossler station upgrade, Hazler station upgrade, and the Sixth Avenue station with the maturity dates, and no new debt obligations are planned for 2024. And the history of our utility dimensions. And the reason for this jump after 2019 is the 6th Avenue lift and the, the well control building, and the West Main Street uh, water sewer. Moving on to our capital projects for 2024, that's just, this is just a departmental breakdown for the dollars. Uh, environmental health, 60,000. Recreation, 1.2 million. Transportation, 765,000. Utility, 1.1 million. For a total capital budget of $4.28 million. So to list some of those out, just a major the major hitters, we have the new arena, $1 million in the budget. Uh, whether it hits that or not, we'll see. Uh, the pumper replacement, $900,000. A new street sweeper, 375 dollars Finishing off the water treatment plant uh, generator auto transfer switch uh, project at three fifty. dollars Centennial Drive North utility renewal. Uh, Centennial Drive North paving on the uh, 100 block and 13th Avenue and 3rd Street pavement. So those are the big ones. Everything else is, is quite a bit smaller. And that concludes the 24 presentation. I know I was going by pretty fast in the operating. If, if someone wants me to go back, uh, or if have any questions, I can always go back. Um, I don't have any questions about what was there. So, just, uh, just so that uh, you may become four, you have to state your name and your civic address, okay? Maybe address? Yeah. Like Swanner? Yeah, and look at your, your physical address. Like my, like if you were going to come to my house? Yeah. Jesse Lacasse, 220 Hill Avenue, I think we are. Um, I didn't see it in there. I was kind of looking for it. So where does the new recreation tax fit in of 5%? For hospitality that's not completed yet but where would you guys see that fitting in in that well where the revenue line will be um it doesn't come into effect until january 1 2025 so it would be on this year's budget yeah uh, what are you expecting that to like ballpark like 100 grand 200 grand it's still in grand. the preliminary stages council hasn't even passed the the, the bylaw on it yet they're still working on it so it's too hypothetical to even really answer the question right now. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? My name's Ainsley White. I'm at 222 Crescent Drive. I'm just
just curious what the underlying costs of um, the increased police costs are a result of. I was noticing it's a like the the police or what I was what I was looking at was that the police costs have increased, but there wasn't a reason on why or what the push was for that. So it's a very good question. Go ahead. Did you want to answer that? Like the, the GIS is yep. what is being added to the to the budget. I'm just going to show the slide. The main reason for the increase in RCMP is council has budgeted uh, for a general investigative unit. That's three extra members, so they won't be. The idea is they're not typical uniform members. They're non-uniform members that, that tackle uh, organized crime, uh, drug problems, things like that. They'll follow where the crime, they'll go where the crime goes, basically. It's, it's not like they'll stop at the town limits, but uh, we are working with our municipal partners to help pay for that cost. But we, we do have it in our budget uh, for that to be started up in 2024. So this is like surrounding the town or like outside of our town limits? The valley. The valley. The GIS the valley. is being is a is an agreement amongst all the municipalities in the valley okay. uh, to help to share the costs of uh, you know fighting crime, I guess you can say, the more organized stuff. And so all the valley municipalities have come together to agree to cost share instead of the town of Swan River just bearing the, 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 the cost of it by yeah. itself. The municipalities uh, outside of the town have agreed to cost share with that in a pilot pro uh, program. Awesome. In addition to that, there is the <coughs> regular operating increase. The, the federal government has mandated body worn cameras on every officer. That's going to be around three thousand dollars per officer that Good. goes on our budget. Uh, they've also unionized, so that happened in 2016. So the they have to negotiate those increases, but we do not get a say at that table. That's a kind of a B in our bonnet, but uh, we don't get a say what those increases are. We just have to pay. Okay. Um, awesome. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good question. Anybody else? Okay. Go ahead. Can you go ahead and do slides for a second? Okay. Have we also got anything? I've got a few. Um, we got one here. Okay, yeah, let somebody else go first. I've got a bunch. Um, I think some recreation expenses. Name of civic recreation expenses. Yeah. Cheryl Sauter, 551 Centennial Drive South. Um, under the recreation expenses, it was more than some thousand, I believe. Uh, for the arena operating for the, op for the arena operating costs. Just wonder, does that like general operating costs, or did that include any kind of retrofit research? Stuff in that cost, you know? Okay, let's go back to that. It's just a general off the retrofit cost of the case. Yeah, I think so. Right there. Yeah. yeah. 40. 487. So that's the operating for the arena for the 2024 year, not including anything to do with the Nothing retrofit. Nothing to do with the retrofit. No. Okay. But I can let the director, uh, Ms. Clausen, also speak to it if she chooses. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear the, the question, Cheryl. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. No, I was just asking about that dollar figure, if that included just general operating costs for the skating rink, or if that included anything to do with the retrofit, <coughs> doing any of the research for that? No, nothing to do with retrofit. This was all just general operating general costs operating? and some repairs, yeah. Um, just quick little question about a detail there. Name, um, that, uh, name and Jeremy Bergen, Swan Valley Star and Time, 74 Main Street East. Um, on that slide with the RCMP, I just noticed there was a little asterisk beside each year. Is there uh, a detail associated with that at all? Uh, just, just in my notes, the the increases from each year, 19 to 20, 3.7 increase, 20 to 21, 2%, and an 8.7% increase for 21 to 22. Uh, I know that they're started here, but I don't have those increases in my notes. Okay. Um, 
what is the change and in increase uh, for fire protection this year? Uh, that budget comes from the Swan Valley Fire Board. So the town no longer runs a fire department. The, the board, which consists of municipal members contributing to the fire department uh, budget, uh, those members pass a budget and send it to contributing councils. What that consists of, I will defer to the chair. <laughs> um, yeah, that was coming. Yeah, this year um, it's a transition year uh, from municipal to, so there's some startup costs that are built into that budget um, <coughs> that are associated with administration startup and that. Uh, there's also some costs uh, for the cleanup from uh, financial accounting from uh, funds that were due to the, the fire board as part of the tr agreement that the town had to transition that were done at the late end of the year, but they were accounted for in this year's budget, so which was primarily the capital funds or expenditures that uh, um, had to be trans. As a part of when you're finished with winding up one organization and then you're starting up a new one, there's the accounting of the monies and stuff like that. So there's some of the, the costs that uh, are being expended in this year versus at the end of December of last year. And can you give a quick explanation again about uh, how Pumper, the replacement for Pumper 1, is being paid for and who is responsible for that? Uh, so, so Pumper 1 uh, replacement, um, as you see in there, uh, the borrowing bylaw that's uh, is, uh, put in at 900000 uh, It's definitely, uh, the tender came in significantly less with that. But the cost share to that Pumper, um, the town, or pardon me, uh, the municipality of Swan Valley West is contributing the sale proceeds of the 2014 bumper that was from the old Thunder West uh, fire department. So the, that sale of proceeds will go against the purchase price of that, and then the town will be responsible for the balance of that uh, invoice. So, so that 900000 was was... So it, that's the basically what was budgeted for the entire truck. Yes. So, and the tender price of the truck came in at seven hundred thirty-five thousand, fully outfitted. Um, if we get market value of the sale of the other one, there should be leaving a balance of roughly four hundred fifty thousand dollars left for the town. So, like half of what was initially projected. Uh, but we always budget high uh, like, uh, on that. So. Uh, when we go to the borrowing bylaw, uh, it passes so that if it uh, does come in lower, then we don't have to start this whole process with public hearings over again. So, so you start high and then yeah. come back down. So, so the $900,000 isn't coming just from the Town of Swan no, River? the Town of Swan River's estimated, depending on this, the final sale of the, that truck, can be in the neighborhood around $450,000 or less. Um, can you explain what pool hanger is? Uh, those are those are metal hanger pipe hangers that uh, support the the water pipes in the basement of the mechanical room of the pool. They are suffering from corrosion. Uh, on the topic of the pool, can you explain how much has been spent on the lawsuit that to people that built the pool? Illegal? Yeah, I have that. Yeah, I, don't, I think that can be public information. We can't get into the legal part of it, no. but yeah, as far as the number goes, that's that, that's public information. I'll have to look it up here. Do you have another question? Um, what's the increase in garbage and recycling this year? Mr. Harvey will answer that question. So last year, uh, garbage collection, or the environmental health services, with garbage collection was 372,479. This year it is 413,600. And with the uh, recycling, it was 581,921 last year. And this year it's budgeted 
that's because there's going to be a change in the uh, services, so that's why there was a drop there. What's the change in the service? Uh, for commercial services to pay directly instead of through the town. Right now, we're just the middleman essentially. So that budget includes them billing directly instead of through us. And then we'll draw more next year because this year includes us doing most of the year still following through and the next year will drop again because we won't be doing that. And when's the, when's the contract up with OSS? Uh, that's up for uh, on the council tonight. Uh, there's an RFP sent out uh, for proposals for recycling, so that'll be discussed tonight. Okay. And if I remember correctly, that all garbage and recycling is covered by special levy? Uh, the residential is, the commercial is invoiced. Legal cost to date are uh, just over one hundred and six thousand. That's over multiple years. Or yeah. Just the, yeah. Yeah. From the start to current. It's been three years now. It has been six years. Six years. What was the breakdown of uh, how much Thomas Swanover pays to GIS? How's that calculated? That, that's still to be negotiated in a contribution agreement between the municipalities. Right now we're, we're looking at per capita. Per so the population. Yeah. Population, yes. Yeah. It's per census population. Is, so, there, is there an estimate? Uh, 67. Is it 67? If it goes into the CPSA, it's 47. Yeah. And that's without the provincial contribution. Yeah. Sixty-seven thousand, forty-seven thousand. So, sixty-seven thousand. We are requesting a grant from the province. No, that's no. without that grant. It's sixty-seven dollars okay. per capita if we pay one hundred percent. But with the federal contribution of the thirty percent, it drops it to forty-seven dollars. So it's sixty-seven times four thousand and forty-nine. <laughs> I don't have my calculator. That's okay. And then what is the mill rate uh, change? That's the budget change. The budget change, yeah. <coughs> so, so the entire budget, like from last year to this year, is 3.63% change. That's how the mill rate, that all fluctuates from household to household, depending on what mill rates are applicable and for parcels and stuff like that. So it's hard to give it an actual general. Um, because each property is different depending on if they had prepaid like with the wellness uh, contribution that they're still paying up or um, local improvements and that but uh, the general um, year over year expenses from last year is 3.63 percent increase but you're asking what the new mill rate is okay. CFO Ganita can answer that quicker CFO Grader, can you hear me? Mr. Grader. will have to repay so it will be a big hit in upcoming years and 
Any comments on that? Okay. So upon hearing all persons present, I now will be adjourning the hearing. Result of the public hearing for the 2024 financial plan will be closed at 7.37 p.m. and the May 7th regular meeting of council will now be resumed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. 4.3. Result of the Mayor and Chief Administrative Officer approve and sign the working agreement between the Town of Swan River and the Swan Valley Legacy Committee attached to Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Wojciech, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Bob. Uh, maybe just if you could explain a little bit more on that agreement that's being laid out for the public. Uh, the agreement is a, a working agreement between the Legacy Committee and the Town that it really sets the guardrails for the project. The details are that the Town is the outright owner, the, the decision maker, the money runs through the Town. Uh, the Legacy Committee's role is to lead fundraising and lead design uh, recommendations to the Building Committee. That's really what well, I don't think I'm missing anything without getting into the, the actual processes. That is the, that's the roles of the two <coughs> organizations, and the agreement lays that out quite well. Thank you. Uh, who was next? Deputy Mayor Memorial. Um, Mr. Poole, uh, we received a letter or an email from the Legacy Committee uh, a couple days ago on May 3rd. Uh, with four outstanding questions. Has a response been provided to that that's satisfactory to both organizations? Um, not written, but uh, the, the changes are, I guess, grammatical, but uh, those the changes in section 207 and 402 were made. Uh, I did answer to a representative this morning over the phone. And, and basically explain that the town, the question was, what is the town's standing development commitment? And does that mean that the way it's written, can that vary? And, and the answer is yes. There's just no other, no other answer. A resolution supersedes the previous resolution. So at any time, that can change. But what it is defined in this agreement is the standing development commitment from the town at a certain time. Right now, that's three point one six three million dollars, and that was the understanding, uh, as part of I remember correctly from our last meeting, is that should fundraising efforts or extra grants come in that are in excess of the commissioning costs of the building, then that's where that would be potentially lowered towards the, top, the, the town's contribution. It wouldn't be just um, arbitrarily reduced during the whole thing we're committing to the 3.16 the only time it would be reduced is if there was excess funds at the excess of the project that were committed during the fundraising efforts to an arena that would be applied towards any debentures that the town would have to solicit as part of that 3.16 that's correct the, the apply against the board okay so and then the, i think the other ones are self-explanatory and you got a, a, a Clarification on the uh, the insurance, uh, or is that still a work in progress on that one? With, with uh, no, the slide? the term that is used is is correct. <coughs> okay. Okay. And then it and then it's it's clear in the agreement that uh, um, no shovels will be actually hitting the ground until all funds are in the bank. Um, to proceed with that project, correct? Uh, yes. So, so, like there's a there's a lot of pre construction work that will be contributed, but the actual physical boots hitting the ground, all the money has to be in the bank before uh, the town would give approval for that to proceed with. 
accepting tenders and moving forward with construction? Yeah, according to the agreement, an award for construction, uh, a town resolution is required. Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion? Councilor Bob. Uh, just at the legacy committee's last meeting, I was under the understanding that they've made a commitment to put some funds forward. I would more or less say 50% of the funds to try to get us to a point where that we would look at more feasibility of project management and stuff like that. I'm under that impression. Is that what I thought? The legacy committee was also have made a commitment on their behalf that the funds they have raised and that did not put forward off the beginning of this project not hold their money until the end. So I had to talk to them for making that commitment. Okay. Councilor White. More uh, a compliment to our community as a whole for taking this big project on. I'm glad you are. Uh, but it's appreciated compliment to our council who does some negotiating or pizza. And uh, uh, it's a compliment to both teams. I think we're on the same page. We want to accomplish the same things. And Mr. Peter, <coughs> you and uh, Mr. Polchuk have explained the fine print, which I've had great difficulty with. But uh, I think it's in terms that I can understand now. So thank you guys. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Do we have something while they're here tonight that we can sign and then we can? No, well, I don't have a printed copy. Okay. Pardon? Yeah, let's uh, let's just maybe uh, we'll take a recess and then we'll let you print that and then um, we can sign that while they're here. Uh, the legacy committee was discussing this um, because we had the questions um, that, that we had asked and sent to Derek. We haven't, we don't have that copy of that agreement yet with all these corrections made. And our suggestion we wanted to make was if you wanted to have this more of a public announcement, um, we could do the signing at that time. If it's past resolution that everybody's in agreement, we don't have to sign that right now before we actually have, yeah, I don't know if you've had a chance to make sure the formatting's right, the numbering's all right. Yeah, I'm fine with that. It was just recommended, so I thought if you're here, we'll do it, but if, you're, if we're not ready, we and want to do we it at do a, a different time, then that's fine. We can prepare a joint or shared statement. Yeah. Um, for the Announcement, yeah. Press and kind of as a kickoff. Yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly yeah. fine with that. Yeah. So then, uh, then we'll resume and, and uh, we'll do it when we're ready for that, so yeah. Okay. This was the this was the big step. It's a yeah. very We're going to continue on with the agenda. So uh, let's move on to our 4.4 with uh, delegation with Ainsley White. So you can come forward to the table here. Right. Uh, do your presentation and or request, however you want to do it. Okay. Council then after that will ask any questions or you can ask any other questions. Okay. Uh, you will not get a response from council as far as anything tonight. Of course. But you can make your uh, request or presentation. So okay. You can sit down. You don't have to stand. Okay. Be comfortable. I, I googled it. I was like, your worship and like I have to say the names and then the last name and like I was trying to. I'm so thankful that it's just more casual. <laughs> I've always been on the committee side and not on the receiving side. Anyway, so the whole reason I proposed the delegation was that uh, when I moved to Swan, I have a history of having farm animals, a lot of chickens, big coop, 20, 40 chickens. I know everything that's in, included in the process and the work and the excrement and, and everything involved. And so I had looked up, can I have chickens in Swan River? And so there was a, um, uh, one of the bylaws had come up from like 1998 or whatever. And I spoke to Derek about it because that's the only one that had come up and it said, you can, uh, it's an old bylaw, but it popped up and it said, uh, you can have non, domestic fowl, don't quote my words here, but it was like non-domestic includes chickens, ducks, blah, blah, blah. Anything not a budgie, makes sense. And you had to establish ex the exact location you were gonna have the birds or the fowl. 
and how you were going to dispose of the excrement, and um, a couple other like key points that completely make sense. And then apparently, after talking with Derek, uh, I don't know his last name off the top of my head, but he's the animal bylaw person from what I understand, um, he said, uh, actually, that bylaw was extinguished and they got rid of it. However, right now, the animal bylaw is being considered and open and revisited. So it would be a great time for you to attend a meeting and propose your change. And so I don't think everybody should have a zoo of animals in their yard. That's ridiculous. But I think where I'm located and where certain people may be located where they could request a specific permit for my specific address and my specific backyard um, and my specific non uh, uh, not it, it nobody would even know that I have chickens I thought it was worth asking because I would like a couple I would like two three eggs a day no rooster no noise I'll use wood shavings, I have a fenced area, and I have pictures that I sent to the COA. Is that you, sir? Or CAO. You? CAO. CAO, yep. pardon me. Yep. I um, so I sent, uh, sent some pictures so that you can see, like, from my back door, the back of the garage is, like, way down there, and then the river is way down from that, and this side can only see a little square um, if the pictures were pulled up. The other neighbor on the south side, can s they don't even have a window really on that side of the house. It's just a garage. So like, really, I could have just done it in secret. Nobody would know. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm not supposed to say that, but I'm just being honest. So that's why I'm here is because I would like the, I think it, I think it would be uh, a good opportunity for both people with kids and people that just want to grow their own food, which I'm a gardener. Um, I don't think it's, it's it's nuts. I'm not asking for a herd or a flock of anything, but I just simply want two to three chickens. Um, like I said, I did provide pictures. It's a fenced area. I have a sheltered existing building on the back of my garage that I could make a chicken coop. And I can also plunk a non-fixed, uh, um, non what's the word? Um, te um, temporary? Uh, not temporary, but you know when you, when you put up a structure and it's not cemented to the ground, what's that called? Um, a floating structure. Yeah, well, not a permanent structure, right? So I could just like plop a chicken coop, a mobile like tractor chicken coop into that fenced area even and have them just, but I mean, I have a fence that's, that's this high. <laughs> it's a perfect little chicken coop area and it's on the back of my garage facing the river, lots far from the river. So I could have, uh, I would, like I say, I would use wood shavings like I can get from uh, co-op egg and then those would pure, uh, just be distributed into my garden um, and used as mulch and compost like I wouldn't have to uh, dispose of it I could reuse that I would reuse I actually just bought a $20 five gallon pail of chicken poo um, to use to for, as fertilizer so if I could make my own that would be awesome and so I just didn't think it was crazy to bring it to council to ask for permission and make it legal. And I don't think everybody should be able to have birds, and I don't think every sort of bird should be allowed in town. But I think if I want two to three chickens, no rooster, no noise, no disruption, nobody even sees it, I thought it was worth asking. Okay. And seeing. All right. Well. <laughs> Thank, thank you I, I didn't see the pictures come up, but um, well, we we pictures? have them on our laptop. Oh, okay, perfect. We can so see I, them here. I had put, I had tried to put like, if you were looking, you know, from the back of my wit, from the back of my door, looking towards the river, how far it was, and then from each side, each neighbor, like 
the one neighbor has a square this big that they see of where the chickens would be and at the very back of their yard and the other neighbors don't even have a window on that side it's just their garage they don't even so they wouldn't even see um, so I just felt in my specific circumstance it would totally be realistic and and not offensive to have a couple chickens okay um, we'll let uh, council ask any questions if they have any okay council member I for one support this um, when I was living in High River just before I moved back here I think it was 2014 2015 they passed a bylaw policy for urban chicken coops I believe their max was three chickens laying hens and no roosters so right in lines with what you're saying one of their requirements though was that you had to take a, a little education workshop on okay. raising urban chickens so Actually, my friend was the one who was contracted to do that. I don't believe she's doing it anymore, but I would strongly recommend looking into High Rivers bylaw and how they rolled that out. Uh, Cassandra Kirkpatrick uh, was the one who did Like High River, Alberta? Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, Cassandra Kirkpatrick was the one who was originally doing it, and she actually has an egg degree and was kind of specialized in poultry and uh, fowl. So she had a good strong background. So I would say something along that lines with uh, being that we do have the animal control bylaw open, now would be the time to look into it. We also have another letter here from another member of the community and I know of at least two or three other people who would be interested in having chickens in town as well. Oh, and I don't see any issue. To me, there's no different an issue between having dogs and cats or having chickens. There's going to be your guidelines as to what is and is not accepted right. and it'll be up to the pet owner to meet those guidelines. So awesome. I don't see it being any more complicated or challenging. They literally stay on your property. They're very good. They yeah. eat the compost. They're quiet. They're quieter than a dog. They can be, absolutely. So yeah. uh, we'll have the questions come through the chair. Uh, Council White. I probably should excuse myself because I've had about 50 years in the chicken business and I certainly have an affinity for chickens. Okay. And I have nothing against cats being in our community and people want to raise cats, good for them. And I don't uh, see any problem with three chickens being looked after or cared for appropriately at all. That's third point, Chuck. So, where did you move from? Which community? Um, so I lived in Minnetona, so I rented a, a house there, um, but otherwise I lived 20 years in Alberta and born and raised in Winnipeg. So when you lived in Alberta, you had your chickens there, like in that community? Uh, chickens there in that community, and then also um, my partner uh, was Dale Moore. We had barefoot farms, and um, so we, he has a flock of chickens that I helped bear <laughs> hatch <laughs> um, I have a, a lengthy so we had uh, probably a 20 30 flock just in Alberta and would we had extra eggs and five dollars a dozen type of thing just farm to table um, people that would show up and so I have a, a lengthy history in dealing with the excrement and actually purposefully harvesting it to not get rid of it, but uh, use it as a fertilizer. It is the best garden fertilizer, hands down, period. Um, absolutely. And then the other question I have for you, did you speak to your neighbors? Like, have you talked to them about it? Like, do they uh, have any issue with it or? Great question. So the one neighbor I spoke to, he said, um, that's an awesome idea. I wish I could have chickens. And if I had that space, I would too. The other neighbor, I haven't talked to them about the chickens um, but we were just talking tree removal and other things and he was like is that our new cat <laughs> and then we had a little kibitz about that so I feel like um, I feel like if it if it wasn't a nuisance to them that it would mm -hmm. like I'm not um, I'm not here to get a permit to get my neighbor's goat um, that I think they would just be fine with it yeah any further discussion with um, any thoughts to like predators that are coming up? It's like 
uh, the river is famous for um, our coyotes and wolves and that walking through town and stuff of like that and uh, that with a, a four foot fence like you see in your pictures there um, unless they're completely enclosed uh, you may be replacing your chickens quite frequently oh totally so that's why I had um, also included a couple pictures of a couple chicken coops they're portable so they're not fixed to the ground and I could just plunk it within that fenced area so not only would like the chickens would have their fenced area but then they could be totally in and protected at night um, alternatively I thought to even just put a netting over top of that fenced area and then it would be good to go but this, similarly, I would protect the chickens like I am going to my growing produce and stuff from the deer. Because they all seem to come up from the river. Like there's a lot of animals near the river that a person doesn't even know are there. Okay, any other members of council? Uh, go ahead. Uh, so this is just a simplification of the high river one. Uh, just out of the points here. And obviously we're still a little bit being that but must obtain a premises identification under the premises identification regulations of the Alberta Animal Health Act. You must obtain liability insurance and produced on demand by a bylaw enforcement officer. That must be if one gets out of something on your neighbors. Operation is for personal use only, no sales. No more than three ends are allowed per property, no roosters. There's quite a few more, but uh, if you just look at high river, if council is considering that, it's yeah. like a good baseline. This, this will, like I said, no decision will be made tonight. We'll just take right. this as information, and yep. council will uh, consider that, I guess, at a, at a future time. But uh, uh, we do appreciate you coming in tonight and making your request. <laughs> well, just trying to not do it behind anybody's back. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to do that. That's, I'm going for permission. Yes. <laughs> not forgiveness. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and thanks for coming out. Thank you. I appreciate the time and I appreciate you um, hearing my ask. I really appreciate it. Perfect. I think nowadays if we can grow our own food both in garden and in protein and eggs and it's like not offensive to anybody, I just, mm -hmm. why not? If, if it's not hurting anybody, then why not? So that's why I thought it was worth an ask. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Well, once, once we get our first couple drafts, we, we'll let you know that the wheels are moving and where we go. Okay. Awesome. Right. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. All right. So moving on to 6.1. 6 Result of the invitation from the Swan Valley Folk Fest Committee dated April the 30th, 2024, be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion just on the Folk Fest in June, Councilor uh, Midwood. I believe they're asking for representation from Council to attend. Yeah, and I'll be there. I've actually spoken with them already about that. So, all in favor? It's carried. 6.2 Resolved that the letter from Nelson Chess dated April the 25th, 2024. And the email from assessment officer dated May the 1st, 2024, be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Any discussion? I know that this is probably the CAO or CFO. We'll look at some of the stuff and maybe give uh, something back to us as well. But anything further to discuss? Go ahead. Just for, for Council's information on page four uh, of the Manitoba online. Uh, assessment page, you'll see under adjustments, there's a negative 50% for access. <clears throat> access, so the the property assessment has been reduced by 50% for this exact reason. Oh, perfect. So that works out to be around $22,000. Yeah. Okay. The CFO can. And that's that process that we're talking about that is available to the, the homeowners to, uh, to go through, so good. Uh, Deputy Mayor Moria. Um, so I trust the administration, either yourself or CFO Benito, will be in court writing correspondence to Mr. Chess, uh, highlighting that reduction and addressing his concerns. That we have already. Have okay. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 6.3.
resulted in RCMP Municipal Policing Service invoice package for the period January 1st, 2024 to March 31st, 2024 be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, second by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Seven, seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works be, uh, report be received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Under transportation, your last line says meeting with, but it's blank. Interesting. Oh, I must have got a phone call when I was filling that out. I'll have to think about it. Is that a question? <laughs> Okay, uh, Council White. Centennial North, that's just over there. How's that going? <coughs> uh, we added some traffic gravel and graded that in. We did a puddle patching. We'll At the far sure. end of it. I'll have to check on the puddle patching. Mm -hmm. there. There's some pools there. Yeah, I'll have to check on that one specifically. Thanks for sure. that. Councilor Bobbick. I think that the meeting with is when I spoke with you earlier this week about having a transportation meeting if the other Councillors are available that we get together and have uh, a pre spring meeting and see where we're going, that sort of stuff. And the other councillors available. I'm good for Friday, or whatever day is good, no, not good for you, okay? So I, I can leave it up to you two and you talk to them whenever. It doesn't have to be this week, but I just think the council would be nice to know the transportation committee, you know, what direction we're moving in this year, so you know. Yeah. Get us all together one Well, we'll let you what your uh, committee uh, are those details up. Okay, okay. Um, I see you. Uh, we got here just so that you're in contact with uh, highways regarding the Kelsey Trail uh, service road because no doubt uh, some fellow councillors have been receiving their annual spring flogging about the condition of that road uh, with people not realizing that that's not a municipal road but an actually service road owned by. Uh, Department of Highways or MTI, whatever they're called. So any news on that conversation? Uh, I did drive by there this morning and they were out uh, grading it. And then the uh, foreman did say he was planning on uh, taking some gravel out there uh, to increase uh, the gravel just because uh, it won't be quite so bad in the spring. Any discussion with them of actually surfacing that gravel Damn stretch? It. Yeah. I, I haven't heard anything. Anytime that I've talked to them, they haven't expressed interest in paving. Okay, can, whenever you talk to them, can I ask that you put that plug in? That it would be nice for that to be paved. Yeah. I would also highly recommend that you uh, maybe let me know when you are doing that. And uh, I do have some people that I know that are on the, the blue ribbon panel that that could become a part of uh, that discussion. So let me know when any uh, correspondence is going there, or if it's going to the minister, let me know, because uh, I know some of the people that are working on the Blue Ribbon Paddle, and this is really partly uh, an important piece of that too, uh, it is in my uh, property. Uh, Councilor Bob. Yeah, just speaking on the grading, it just comes to mind that uh, I spoke earlier about this to uh, Director Harvey, that I think maybe we should have a look at Monday mornings, traffic on these roads. These are roads that uh, need attention at all times. I think we should make it an issue that the greater goes Monday mornings and cleans up what has been damaged over the weekends and make sure they show up there and do it and not wait until somebody home. So uh, they need to be graded. I happen to drive down Kelsey. Uh, if I lived on that street, I still would not be impressed with what's there. Uh, it's rough as heck. So I don't know what you're going to have to do with that. The base that's on there is like cement. So I don't know how you're going to loosen up and get what you're going to do there. But uh, I would not want to live on that road if I was there. I think all counselors should take a drive down there and speed up and see what you get. Uh, with that, the asphalt repairs in town, probably councils have noticed that there seems to be quite a few potholes and lots of deterioration in that. Asphalt this year is probably due to the freeze thaw cycle over the years. I think we need to do an assessment on the entire town because this is going to cost some money. 
Okay. 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 Just a friendly reminder that maybe you should be looking at the 1.4 liters per square meter instead of the 1.8. You'll save you 25 percent on your uh, calcium application if you look at that. Yeah, we have a uh, map, so I was going to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, that. <coughs> we can just leave that as long as calcium don't come before the meeting. Yeah. 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 Then we can get it right on the map because we give that to our guys to go sound free right on there. Okay, just the other thing is uh, the engineering of the berms at the landfill has we moved forward with any of that. I didn't have a chance to send it out yet just because I was dealing with a few other things, but that's on my docket to get as soon as I can. And I guess I don't know if this goes to Director Harvey or not, but uh, has anybody noticed that the lines in the streets are not there anymore? So I think we're going to be For line painting? Yeah. yeah. Not our. Part. I'm saying highways need to be, if they were put on late last fall, like, they're visible now. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I was going to mention the report later on, but um, I did have a chance to speak with the Premier and one of the Ministers last week, and that was an item that we brought up. Okay. But we will be requesting uh, to speak with the uh, Minister Naylor on that item, plus several other items that, that are in our portfolio. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that's a poor one to keep bringing up because we did bring it up last fall. Uh, we had a meeting with the minister um, just to we understand it's contracted, but to rotate it so we're not always the last ones. Exactly. And uh, so I think just every time you guys are meeting with the minister, if you can mention that, we'll kind of stick in the brain about being up, but make sure they're not last again this year. And just for council information, as we uh, noted that eight. Between 8th and 9th, the back alleys, they will probably have a more depth, in depth conversation if we have a transportation meeting and report back to council on that. We'll bear in that. Back alley. Deputy Mayor Moore. With the utility, how are we making out, or is that project completed with the emergency generator and the transfer switch? Has that changeover been done yet? or? Uh, that one's just about done, it's like 99%. Any further, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Resolve the Director of Recreation report be received. Moved by Councilor Wojciech, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. Uh, under your candidate, you might want to reach out to Small Valley Communities That Care. They have some large uh, I think one game is a Jenga and another one is like a Connect Four or something. So if you want to have access to them and available for Canada Day, I think our next board meeting is May 16th. Um, you can certainly request them and then the board can approve them. It's um, a good idea, thanks. You're welcome. Under the Toy Box project, I'll be speaking to more of this in my report, but uh, it indicates here that it's to provide a low to free cost. The objective is to actually provide a free cost so it's accessible to all uh, people regardless of financial standing. Um, and there will, oh, again I'll speak to it more, but there's gonna be other equipment provided to the Friendship Center and whatnot, so it might be a case of just knowing who's <coughs> what and maybe where to send people in the community for other games and activities or equipment. Councillor Bloodshock. Uh, we did actually have those games last year at Canada. Day. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. I'm just comments about the toy box, if I could. Um, so the the provide low to free cost for the toy box. Um, when I went to the rec conference a couple months ago. Um, I, I went to a really good presentation about accessibility and inclusiveness and all of that stuff. And one of the things that really hit home on is 
um, a lot of people don't want something for free. They want to pull their own weight. They want to contribute where they can. They might not have much to contribute, but they want to. So we're going to work something around that, that if they have something they want to donate or whatever, that's what that'll be. If they don't, that's fine too. We're also going to be looking for some don donations around the community. I know that in the basement there's some bikes and stuff that have been collected along the way with no owners and you know diff different random things like that that people can come and sign out. Maybe they want to try a sport or learn to ride a bike or something and don't have the means to do so. We're hoping to, that's why it's called the Toy Box. We plan to set up one of the dressing rooms with this collection of things with a sign out sheet kind of thing or so working out the details and we were fortunate enough that Jenna came forward and said we have some money to spend what kind of projects are you guys working on and we said hey how about this and she liked the idea and we have some details to work out but this is the start of our project that's all I have to say about that okay thank you uh council I like the phrasing of donation. So, I know in yoga they do that a lot of times too. Sometimes pay what you can. And if you want to take it for free, you get it for free. If you want to leave a donation, you leave a donation. Yeah. All right. Any further? Go ahead. You have a question? Councilor White. Yeah, I noticed uh, that you were finding apparently. A, an increase in needles in some of your parks and you've given your staff some kits to deal with them. Have you thought of anything other than the kits that whatever they are, who cares, I guess I do care, but any other proactive things to deposition spots, more spots for them, or will they just throw them on the ground regardless of the spots available? I don't know. Um, no, I haven't done any much more thought other than just cleaning up from winter and stuff we have some leaves and stuff we didn't get done in the fall because it decided to rain right at the end so we're trying to get on that and we're finding some needles that have piled up in some of some of those snow pile areas but other than steering people away from them i i don't i don't have a solution i encourage you and your team to try to think about one and of course i'll do the same on, on that, like, have you like engaged with community mobilization? Because I thought they kind of did that maybe once or twice a year. Is that the group from Primary Health Care Center? Harm reduction. reduction, sorry. There's a group sorry. there. You might want to, it's in within harm reduction. Okay, uh, yeah, we do have, we work with Leanne Campbell and Ashley Tibbet a little bit. Okay. And yeah, um, we let them know when we we have you know we get a large amount or something we let them know um, they said that they have people that go around and clean them up as well so we're just trying to connect with those people and just you know everybody's just trying to do their part okay well thank you uh, Councillor Medwood and then Councillor Boychuk and Councillor Powell I would get follow up with uh Sorry, I've already forgot the names of two ladies you were speaking to, uh, and see and maybe talk to them about putting a permanent sharps location if it seems to be specific spots or whatever. And maybe look at putting because that's what harm reduction had put around the town or community previously is they had put out <coughs> permanent uh, sharp bins so that they could be dropped into there instead of being dropped on the ground. I know we have one in the arena, and I believe a couple of years ago um, there was a bunch put up around town, but we could definitely look at putting some in the parks, maybe. It's a good idea. Go ahead. Uh, there is some in the washrooms and the baseball uh, thing, but it's locked now, so there's probably no access. You might have to change it to the exterior, but I would say anytime you're finding needles anywhere on recreation grounds or in the community, you notify harm reduction because this is their baby and they are tasked with cleaning up you're putting that stuff out in the community you need to make sure that either these people are disposing of it properly or you're cleaning it up it's not the community's problem to have to clean this up okay. uh, Councilor Paul. Um, I just know for, for harm reduction it's Chelsea Cook that you have to get in contact with so I, don't, I can send you her phone number I'm sure Chelsea is Chelsea at the Cook. primary health care center no she's in the building um, She's in your building? No, she's in the building um, where 
Oh, right next door to CMHA. That's where she is. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. thank you for that. One other question. Um, have you received your hometown green, green team grant already? Yes, we received our grant. Oh, you have? Okay. Good job. Uh, Mr. Harvey, that's the thing. Yeah, just my personal life. I saw some boat needles, and I can't remember which town or where it was, but they were saying they were considering starting a pro program where to get a clean deal. They had to, had to mm -hmm. use one. Yeah, well that's we we've spoke with the ministry on that several different times with the previous government. I'm sure it's something that this council would bring it up with the new government and with the health minister because I believe that is something that should be done. Thank you. Councilor Borcha. I can't remember the exact words you used when we brought it up with, um, I think it was Neil Ives at the time, and basically that puts too much on the individual. They might feel bad and they're not accountable to have to return. I too feel if you take 10, you bring 10 back, you get 10 more. That makes sense to me, but it's something to do with the programming there that that's not an accountability level that they check off for them. All right, good discussion. Uh, anything other than that uh, questions on recreation report? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, moving on, uh, 7.5 for council reports. So let's start with I council. So I did. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Point of order. Uh, resolved that the protective services report for May 2024 be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Uh, yeah, I'm in a bylaw where it says uh, there's two instances of household burning unauthorized material, and there is fines of $7,342. Is that each? Yes. And how do we recoup that? Uh, we can add that to taxes. Okay. Anything uh, further? Go ahead. I have a few. Um, under safety, uh, the first one, workplace health and safety, we were issued minor improvement orders for two facilities and no improvement orders for two facilities. Which were the two improvement that required improvements and what were they? I'll have to get back to you. I, that was a couple of weeks ago. Do sure. uh, you have an answer to that? Uh, the public works shop had a few listed. The water treatment plant didn't have any. I believe the pool didn't have any. And the room might have had some. Um, at the shop, there was some paperwork, and then there was like, some oil that was spilled. And one of them was for the room was a guard, and the grinder didn't have a guard on, so we put the guard back on, and stuff like that. You have another one? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Under bylaw, uh, the first point there, we have successfully filed our first three certificates for the collection of unpaid delinquent fines. Um, what were these in relation to? Uh, if I can recall, I think there was, they were different. One was unsightly. I'll have to confirm exactly what the fines were. But uh, these are the first certificates, I guess, that, you know, people aren't paying their fines. Uh, We've gone through the court process and we're winning. So we're, we're recouping uh, our monies owed to people not paying our bylaw fines. So I'll, I'll, I can get back to council on the specific fines for these three certificates that went to the provincial court. Because the last line says if they go unsatisfied, we'll proceed with further actions, including wage garnishment. So these are obviously fines that cannot be moved on to the property taxes? That's correct. So I'm assuming parking tickets definitely be one. But, uh, okay. And then you mentioned unsightly property. I see the report here further down, but I thought we weren't enforcing the unsightly bylaw until <coughs> the first. The unsightly bylaw is still 
uh, working with the structure standards bylaw is not being enforced until we get the ad campaign. So that these are all based on the previous bylaw? Correct, yeah. Okay. For the discussion, Councilor Bullock. I'm just wondering what the costs were to proceed in provincial court for those judgments. Um, if there was filing fees for such, I know a small claim, I think it was $75 under yeah. 50000 or under 75000 now that amount has. So just wondering if the return on investment is actually there. Like There has to be, if it's a $25 parking ticket and it costs us $75 for that plus the person's time, and then we're going to try and get a garnishment order granted, which is going to be more filing fees, and then you're going to have to be able to actually draft the documents to do that. It, We'll, we'll take a look at the cost of what this took. Yeah. Because the then, minimum parking is 100, but we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Perfect. That's a lie. What you said is true, but I, I suspect, I have the data, that if we don't give them, everybody will park for them. So you have, it's going to cost us a few dollars to get the other person the ticket and find it in court. But that message gets out, and in the long term, we should benefit. Or just raise the, uh, raise the fine. Yeah. Well, raise the fine. For the discussion, Councilor Medwell. The demolition of properties, where are we at? Because it says here at the end that we now have a path forward with all the properties, but what is that path forward? Uh, they're all circumstantial, they're all different. One of them we're not moving forward with because the owner has secured a contract to build a new house. Uh, several other ones we are going to be putting out an RFP for demolishing. And other ones were contacting the, the contractor who won the RFP over a year ago to see if we can work out. But the point being, the processes have started over where we've confirmed from our lawyer that we're safe to proceed, so we'll see some demolitions happening in the next couple of months. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, Council reports, Council White. Pretty busy. Uh, I'll be brief. April 16th, uh, Mr. Poole and I and uh, other members of the community met from EcoStrap and we're talking about the availability of biofuel <coughs> in, the, in the valley as a whole and obviously using biofuel as an energy source, which brought us a number of you know, the main ones. And uh, that went back to them. They're still in the process of evaluation. Uh, April 17th, at Urban Forest, and we're planning our Arbor Day on May the 21st, and they're going to do a recognition at that time for the Richard Hall family for their contributions. April 17th, the Legacy Committee, we met with them, and uh, the results of that were more fruit tonight with the Arena Project uh, Agreement. April 22nd, I met with the Albert Shark and Pension Center, we talked about seniors housing. The 23rd of April, we had their cow meeting. On the 25th, we had another legacy meeting at uh, Edward Chartrand Friendship Center dealing with how to uh, work collaboratively. On May the 1st, we had our medical services meeting at uh, Recruit Retain. It was the, the main product again, and, and the CT scan in its progress, which appears to be really, really long, far ahead of schedule. And one of the main topics was school visitations, trying to have schools uh, be exposed to what we should do for them in the medical world. Uh, May the 6th, I had an LP SAC meeting, Stakeholders Advisory Committee, and there was concerns over the litigation of the First Nation right now. But Premier Canoe said jobs were his number one priority, so I stay optimistic to find a solution to that. And that's it. Good, good, thank you. Uh, Council Member. Uh, April 17th was uh, meeting with the Swan Valley Legacy Committee. I voiced my concerns there, same as tonight. I still have concerns with regards to using reserves to fund initial costs for the arena project with using the community building or gas tax reserve and or ACSC. Um, it doesn't impact the 2024 taxes. However, if we don't go to build, then it will affect our ratepayers in the future and all funds will need to be paid back. Um, 
I'm also not comfortable with using the tax stabilization reserve on the arena project until we have a known plan for a new lagoon, which we have been in need of for over a decade. It was supposed to be dealt with in 2014. Um, we haven't been putting the funds aside from the increased uh, utility rates as per the letter from the Public Utilities Board uh, for the reason for granting us the uh, extra um, rate collection. So we have about $150,000 for a lagoon that will cost in the neighborhood of $10 million. So that's a growing concern for me. April 18th was Swan Valley's Community That Care, and I also had the Community Safety Wellbeing Advisory Steering Committee meetings. So the Swan Valley Communities That Care, we as a board decided to use our surplus budget going towards supporting community initiatives. So this is a partnership between the Swan Valley Communities That Care, the Town of Swan River, the Albert Chartrand Friendship Centre, as well as the RMA Mountain to offer, provide easy access to equipment so that community members can participate in outdoor activities free of cost. So there's just shy of $2,800 coming to the Town of Swan River for uh, basketball, soccer ball, uh, baseball equipment, soccer equipment, bocce ball sets, four square, balls, uh, disc golf, horseshoes, activities like that. There's just shy of $1,500 going to the Friendship Center, and I think that's for equipment for pickleball, street hockey, and laser tags. I believe it's all things they can do on the outdoor court that they're getting redone over there. And then $600 to the RMM Mountain to provide four free family swim days at the Birch River Pool this season. A uh, Community Safety Wellbeing Advisory Steering Committee meeting was well attended, but we were missing representation from a few groups and organizations. We discussed the importance of each group or organization being present at the table to ensure success and continuity of the project. Uh, potential barriers and obstacles, as well as expectations, were discussed in that meeting. Uh, psychological safety was one of the topics within the committee as well as within the community as we move forward. April 22nd, Seniors Cooperative Housing Presentation, so the Services to Seniors, Assisted Community Futures and Cooperatives First to host that session at the Albert Chartrand Friendship Centre. There was four key cooperative styles discussed and I thought there was a couple that could potentially work within our valley, not just for our seniors, but possibly for our homeless and our vulnerable folks as well. So we had some, uh, Jennifer, I can't think of her last name, attend from the Homelessness Task Force. So she had some ideas, I think, coming out of there. That might be some possibilities. Uh, April 4th or 24th was the Community Safety Wellbeing Community of Practice meeting. That was actually a great opportunity to engage in some breakout sessions to build connections with our neighbours to the north and south of us where we were able to discuss where we're all at as well as what challenges we're currently facing in the community as, uh, as well as uh, Community Safety Wellbeing planning and how we can work together to support each other. And uh, in the I attended the Cal on the 23rd, kind of the same concerns raised there regarding the arena project. And I did request the most current copies of the Municipal Airport Agreement as well as the Management Agreement between the Airport Commission and Town of Swan River on May 3rd, but I'm still waiting to receive both those documents. Do we have an ETA of when they'll be coming? Which, sorry, I was ready. The, I, want, I would like to review the Municipal Airport Agreement as well as the agreement between the Town of Swan River and the Airport Commission for managing the airport. Yeah, we will send those out. Perfect. Thank you. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell. Okay, um, so we, <laughs> excuse me, um, had uh, a legacy committee, we met with them. Um, most of the things were said over here, but um, the library. So the library, um, we uh, received a summer of jobs, um, summer of jobs application, and so we will be hiring a summer student for them this year. Uh, we'll be meeting with the auditors on the 27th, and will be presenting to us, and we will be also um, 
soon as that's done, we'll be bringing that to fourth to the council here. Um, we've actually uh, placed an ad with the library as well for and had a couple couple uh, applicants. So we're actually going to be doing some interviews in the next little while. So that's a good thing. Um, trying to have a staff staff meeting with staff meeting with them as well. Um, quite a bit of work has been coming to the library lately. Uh, Committee of the whole meeting we attended. Um, I guess, and the only other thing was that um, we met with a uh, with, with meeting with Premier Canoe, and um, I think that uh, next it was really good. I think everybody really, really enjoyed it, and um, I think the next time would be just maybe somewhere a little bit less quiet or a uh, less, less more. I mean, so. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bobbin. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, but some meetings with watershed, we've got lots of projects on the go. Uh, some of the things you're looking at is fish ladder down by Jerisax. We'll be cleaning that out. Another project that's big on our priority is we're going to be looking at a project at Thunder Hill. There uh, seems to be sloughing goes on there every year. They hire equipment through all the world. We'll be looking at that there. Watershed can bring engineers in from the province at no cost, so we'll be looking at that. So there's lots of good things going on there. We're always looking for projects so if somebody brings something forward we're there. So uh, Legacy Committee, we've had a couple meetings with them. Uh, lots of good conversation. The Premier, some interest, interesting comments, crime, uh, uh, jobs. Uh, and I guess when we speak of crime it was also struck me funny that loud noises don't seem to be a crime in the town of Swanner, but they sure showed up that day. So I I, I, I go back to Town of Swan River, in comparison to other towns, seems to have lots of noise. Uh, so I don't know where we go with that, but I've been talking about this for quite a while. There's, if you want to come out uh, about this time of night, but my place of drag should be starting at any time. So uh, I don't know where we go with that. Okay. And just to begin with the call meetings and stuff like that. Uh, I would like to also, at the next call meeting, get a on the agenda for just people on dog licensing. Not good. Thank you. Okay. I just want to comment that um, what the group is uh, working with Thunder Hill because that has been an issue for, for a long time. Yeah. It's good that um, you know, the organization is getting involved because uh, it has been pretty serious. If you could bring in some people that doesn't cost them anything, yeah. then uh, it'll be a win win situation. Councillor uh, Borcha. Um, so April 17 met with the Legacy Committee there. Great meeting. Um, thought through a lot. Uh, I think we've made uh, great strides forward. The more meetings and the more times we can get in the same room together, I think will be better as far as that goes, as far as planning and developing. Um, April 18th we had a recreation meeting. And April 22nd, had a meeting with Chamber of Commerce. There's a lot of things going there. We're looking at doing another public uh, meeting update uh, as far as um, what's been done to date since the last one, as far as crime in the community and some of the things that are available to residents and some of the projects that are ongoing. Um, we're just waiting on a new date that RCMP can attend for that. It'll be on a Monday night, likely at the theater again. <coughs> um, the parade theme this year is uh, celebrating the RCMP musical ride, seeing as they will be attending at these, this year's uh, Stampede. So fitting uh, parade theme, hopefully. And uh, April 23rd, Cal meeting. And then April 25th, another meeting with the Legacy Committee. And uh, again, very successful and uh, looking forward to moving forward. That's everything for me. Okay, thank you. Happy Memorial. Uh, a number of uh, items have been discussed already. Uh, the, the legacy uh, meetings that we had for the two of them. Um, the recreation uh, presentation we had from a resident um, that's interested in setting up a disc golf course in uh, Legion Park. Um, with getting uh, sponsorship from businesses and other sponsors um, so that it's at no cost um, to the town and from the discussions that he was presenting and stuff like that, that him and some other people would be up for installing it themselves also. So, so that was some great uh, 
discussion there, but the uh, Recreation uh, Department will flush that out a little bit more and hopefully um, he'll be coming to Council to make a formal presentation on that uh, once he gets a little bit more of those details flushed out. Uh, a, cow, or a Seniors Co-op presentation that was previously discussed, that was there. Um, a special meeting, a town meeting on the 23rd. And then I attended the PIMJAC meeting, uh, the Municipal Justice Advisory Committee meeting in Winnipeg on the 26th, um, where we were advised that the uh, RCP arbitration uh, has now concluded. Um, they have been awarded 4% increase for 2023 and an additional 4% for 2024. So there's a year, year, year ahead. Um, so it's problematic um, that it's only a two year contract and that's the cycle that uh, uh, a lot of the major law enforcement agencies are now tying in contract partners with so that they can, what's the word I'm looking for? Increase their salary increases exponentially um, year over year by tying themselves in a very short contract period over lengthy periods. Uh, the body worn cameras are should be rolled out later this year. Um, it went to the second vendor um, that met all the requirements of testing, so that rollout should be coming out shortly. So. There's still arguments um, regarding the five-year federal contribution of it uh, to the costs. Um, the cameras are not even here yet, but the calendar has already started from the announcement, so we're almost at the end of the contribution. But very little money has been spent already, which is uh, a very problematic to uh, the committee and AMM as a whole and the MPSA uh, contract. Um, Along with the, uh, the news with the lack of consultation again from Public Service Canada regarding the contract negotiations, um, uh, AMM and PIMJAC representatives, um, I believe, will be in Ottawa this week presenting uh, to Public Service Canada the a presentation on Manitoba's communities, most in particular the MPSA agreements with uh, communities ability to pay these agreements and how it is being detrimental to municipal budgets with these ever increasing unconsulted fees being just dropped onto the municipalities and moving forward. Um, with ours, it's, it's over 20%, but there's other communities um, that are well above that. So, uh, so they're uh, gonna try and do an education program to MPSA, or pardon me, uh, Public Service Canada, um, on when they do negotiate or have these discussions um, that they need to take into consideration uh, the municipality's ability to pay these contracts. Um, we did get a very, very space level um, view of the MNP report. Um, very, and it's, a lot of it is, uh, it was in cameras, but uh, it is in my, thought that uh, the general public or municipalities will not see that report. Um, it was presented for the uh, previous government and the previous minister. Um, the new minister and the Department of Justice do have it. Uh, they did share some trends that were out there, which basically it's confirming that we all knew that uh, the funding <coughs> formula for RCMP contracts in the province was unfair and that there needs to be a new process for that. Um, looking forward, that process, uh, from what it sounds like, is justice will be engaging NPSA municipalities and the province and other jurisdictions for uh, a new funding formula or a new funding regime for the province for RCP, which was good. So, um, so the committee was very, um, I wouldn't say elated, but relieved that now that we're not pushing that ball uphill. It is now, I guess, at the top of the hill, and it's going to start its way down with the consultation phase with the, the municipalities on how RCMP or policing in this province is going to be funded. And there's a different, was a number of models or themes, I should say, not models that were suggested. So, um, on the 30th, a CEO Poole and myself attended the uh, uh, safety summit uh, put on 
by the Department of Justice in Winnipeg, where representatives from across the board, uh, from municipalities to justice to law enforcement to community services to lawyers, judges, First Nations, the whole gamut was there to um, get input in, on different themes or topics that were out there, like public safety, rural and northern safety, homelessness, addictions. Uh, there was a whole slew of comments where um, our thoughts and ideas were put together and are going to be compiled for the Department of Justice to uh, put together the public safety uh, strategy that should be released in September, as was announced here last week. So, um, so it was very well attended. Uh, I think there was probably a couple hundred people there that were very appreciative and that was one of the very uh, first steps uh, where people were actually sought in that type of format for their opinions and thoughts. Um, May 1st was the Medical Services Committee, which Councilor White alluded to. Uh, May 2nd um, was the Premier's announcement um, here on the front steps. But uh, uh, His Worship and myself and CEO Poole had a working meeting after with the Premier, which I'll let uh, the, His Worship uh, report on that and same with uh, the Justice uh, Minister after that. On the third, I had a team's call with uh, Shared Health Emergency Response uh, Services, the CEO and the Director of HR uh, who had reached out to um, Medical Services Chair, Mr. White, or Council, and I took the lead on that and contacted them um, as they were um, impressed with our community's involvement on recruiting and retention of medical professionals in the valley and there's an upcoming intake of paramedics uh, that's going through right now um, that they wanted to reach out and see if there was anything how we could assist them in bringing more paramedics to the Swan Valley because there's, uh, there's over a 50% vacancy rate between the Swan River and Mafeking stations. Um, basically the nuts and bolts of that conversation was that uh, full paramedics and return, uh, a return to service agreement would not work with them due to some issues uh, with unions and grievances and whatnot. So they were looking to see what we could do as versus in kind, uh, which particularly was housing. Because uh, housing is a big issue with them, especially when you get uh, uh, younger professionals that are 19, 20, and never been really left the city and now they're looking at a new community to live in um, so they're looking for uh, potential ways so I will share that conversation with the medical services committee and see what we can do and report back with that um, and then on the 6th CEO Poole and myself had a quick uh, meeting um, with the RCMP uh, regarding the, uh, the GIS and the information that the minister uh, had required um, as part to move that project forward. So and that's all I had so far. Okay. Yeah, lots and lots of things going on in the last few weeks. Um, I, one of the things that I just early on I almost forgot about, but you mentioned about the Frisbee golf presentation and disc what a golf. good, or sorry, disc golf, Frisbee golf, whatever it's called, disc golf. But what a good presentation that. The, uh, the young guy had there and, uh, and his plan and I, and I think that, you know, like you said, at some point in time when he's ready, he'll make a presentation to council on that. Uh, on the 24th and 25th, I was at the AMM Lobby Days and uh, this gives us an opportunity to uh, visit with the government, the opposition as well and discuss uh, you know local issues or AMM issues in particular of the uh, the four pillars that uh, AMM has laid out uh, last year with the government and the kind of the check marks and a lot of things that we have uh, we have uh, been successful with um, but also with uh, predictable funding as we all know about that and what municipalities uh, get back and it was interesting because they they, the staff at AMM presented uh, uh, the talk about escalator funding, right? You know, we're looking for, for some uh, consistent funding. And they gave uh, the Premier and the Ministers uh, these little stress uh, relievers, and they're shaped like an escalator. 
and so it was uh, quite mm -hmm. fitting. But uh, but anyway, um, it was interesting in that meeting. I wanted to point out that um, they had different ministers speak. Firstly, of course, the um, municipal affairs uh, minister. But you know, when I when I speak to the ministers that are, are new and they're starting to learn their their roles and all that, and their deputies and their assistant deputies, but. When I speak with them, a lot of them say, where are you from? And I say, well, from Swan River. And they go, man, is Swan River talked about a lot. So I think we're doing a good job of, of uh, you know, knocking on the doors and, and getting the, to speak to the, to the right people. Um, chamber, yeah, there's great news when the, uh, the uh, uh, RCMP made the announcement that we're going to have the municipal ride here. In fact, when I was at AMM Lobby Days, I mentioned it to the board and a bunch of them said, we're coming to Swan River. Mm -hmm. So that's great. And then, of course, when I had a chance to chat with the minister or the premier, I invited him to come back to Swan River for the rodeo weekend. And on that, of course, uh, last uh, Thursday, we had an opportunity to have the premier and uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Weed. Uh, visit us and, and uh, for a news release or a news conference and um, I was able to host that and uh, what a quite organized affair that we had but uh, I do thank the Premier and uh, Mr. Weeb for coming and visiting us and, and hearing our our issues and our stories that uh, we want to be uh, working with the government. One of my comments were building a relationship with the Premier and, and with ministers along the way, but it's such an important process and we can't lose sight of that and, and, uh, and showing that we, we work with any government. It doesn't matter what the strike of the political party, we work with the government and that's our responsibility. But uh, and then shortly afterwards, uh, it was mentioned earlier by Deputy Memorial that uh, we did have a chance to speak with uh, the Premier and uh, Mr. Weeb, or Minister Weeb with us at the same time and their staff. But we did speak about, uh, you know, the, some of the, the key points that we wanted to kind of stick to. Healthcare uh, came up and the Minister, you know, was, or, I mean, the Premier was, uh, uh, you know, was happy to see that our community has been so involved with the CT scanner. And, and of course, that announcement uh, with it coming uh, to operation here just in the next maybe perhaps month and how it's going to take uh, a lot of pressure off if it's Dauphin or Winnipeg or even the Paw and, and how much more we'll have in, in Swan River and, and help the whole process and help you know better health for people of the whole valley and, 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 and connected areas. Uh, we talked about promoting Swan River as a hub which uh, we talked about that and how the municipalities have uh, have letters of support that you know said that hey you know Swan River should be a hub you know we're a regional area and uh, they took that away. Um, we also talked about how Swan River needs to be more than just a, a healthcare hub, but a, more of a, a hub with a lot of other uh, uh, things uh, that uh, the government and, and and us work together with um, on the healthcare part. Um, we did mention that uh, the premier that we will be um, reaching out to the minister of health on on that uh, those items, but uh, there were takeaways that they had uh, for sure. Uh, MTI, we had the discussion about the uh, subway intersection and where the whole process is with a consultation with if it's this roundabout or what, and so uh, that's been you know taken away with uh, the premier as well. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, that crossing, that pedestrian crossing that is at the, the KFC area. And uh, again, that's something that we have to work on. And uh, you know, he, and he did take that away from us. And we talked about the snow clearing contract that we have on Main Street and, uh, and line painting. It was just mentioned a little while ago, how our lines, you know, where do they disappear? And, and of course, the contract that the province has with, you know, you can't do it on December or October 31st and think that your lines are gonna last, you know, all winter long. Because if actually you're driving in some of the center or the, the inside lanes, people don't really know where they're supposed to be driving. So it can be a little bit airy when you're out there. So that was brought up. And of course our airport funding, we we're asking for that. And we did get a little bit more money from the province in that announcement that day. 
but uh, in all MTI with healthcare, we are going to be wanting to meet with uh, those ministers again. And, and Minister Naylor knows, you know, some of the stuff because we had a chance to speak with her on some of these things last year. But we need to uh, to get meetings or or get our letters to uh, to the ministers on these specific things, uh, knowing that now the premier has uh, has heard our our um, our issues with those uh, certain. Uh, portfolios and upcoming funding we talked about uh, the arena the premier he kind of perked up when we said that and and he just said make sure you keep us in on the loop so uh, we promised that we would and uh, and we talked about our partnerships with um, you know our hopes of partnership with our municipalities that are around us and also with the MMF and with our First Nations um, they definitely said you know like keep uh, keep that open we talked about our aging lagoon and discussions on that as time goes on uh, and where that looks like and again they they really said partnerships partnerships working with you know not just by yourself but working with other municipalities or with first nations as an example and then of course our regional landfill expansion at some point in time we kind of rushed on that a little bit as well as we we're running out of time um, and of course, I said that we had Minister uh, Weeb in the room with us, which was was good, and he, and he had his, uh, uh, I guess, assistant with him as well, and they took some good notes and, and listened uh, on some of the key issues that we had with, of course, with policing costs, and, and we're lucky to have Deputy Mayor Morio working on Pim Jack, and we're lucky that we have AMM working and making this presentation in, in Ottawa, I think you said, this week on policing costs. And they really, the AMM really wanted to see and, and bring forth the impact on our municipalities of policing costs because we cannot continue where the path is. And when I did speak with the uh, deputy or the assistant deputy minister for justice, you know, um, and he's been kind of like on our, yeah, you know, like working with us in the past. And, uh, and he, he, they, that's kind of the, the, the repeated thing amongst a lot of the uh, MPSA uh, contract holders that this is just not sustainable any longer and we need to do something about that. So the minister heard us uh, a plea on that and again, um, we'll see how things are going. And of course, then I had a chance to meet with the minister with the, the Reeves and we talked about GIS. And in that, we talked about adding that to our agreement, but then we knew that the federal government would, would be uh, adding a uh, our reduction to it. So we asked the provincial government uh, for a, a matching of 30% uh, as well uh, for funding towards that. And we repeated uh, a few times that this is a one-of-a-kind uh, agreement amongst uh, municipalities partnering on fighting crime. And, uh, and we asked for these funds as part of this uh, pilot project that we have, you know, moving forward. So the minister was receptive when I had mentioned that. And so we will see, but we haven't stopped with him yet. And we will be uh, uh, lobbying for that in the future and, and I have to say that the Reeves did, did very well asking a lot of you know important questions that were relative to um, the GIS and some other things that they had to talk about so in all in all the, the, the afternoon that we had with the Premier and with the Minister uh, was very uh, productive that I felt and uh, it's a good start because we're not done yet we're moving we we still have a lot of stuff to uh, to talk about so Anyway, I think I've taken up enough of that time. So I, uh, I, I was going to talk about the legacy. I think we spoke enough, enough, but you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But uh, it, this is a good start, moving in in the right direction with the, the legacy group. So with that, uh, I ask uh, CAO Poole to uh, speak on his report. We do have a written report, just some, some highlights. Uh, the EcoStrat Biozone rating did come back in, so the we do have a meeting set up in the next 10 days to start planning a marketing plan for North America. The town of Swan River will be the second one in Western Canada to finish the bio biomass rating, so we wanna, we wanna pump that that Swan River's leading the way, so that's exciting. Uh, we're going through a hiring process to replace a clerical staff. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, Deputy Mayor Morio had a good summary of the Provincial Safety Summit, but I can confirm we, we were not shy and we were honest. Uh, and I just want to thank the staff and the office for, for preparing everything and organizing the meeting uh, with the Premier. Uh, a lot of work went into that in a short amount of time, but I think we rolled out the red carpet and did a good job. Um, our regional crown attorney has requested victim impact statements from council. So what I am doing is contacting our larger grocery stores, department stores, some businesses to, uh, to get some detailed information and that will basically accompany a letter from the town uh, that will have that. But it's really good to see the, the Manitoba Justice asking for information on Swan River that means they're listening. So. Well, and that's something that the province, uh, the government has said that they want to see that happen. And yeah. just to let you know, there's some businesses that have um, told me that they've already got those requests already. So, good. yeah. Good. Sorry. Uh, and a reminder, May 23rd, Sapatoyak? Yes. Yeah. So we'll, we'll head up to Sapatoyak Green Nation. Reminder? Yeah, I believe it went out by email. We sent it out. Well, it, it, it originally went out as Thank you. Uh, May the uh, 13th. 13th, but the chief has asked it to be bumped ahead a little bit. So uh, May the 23rd is the day that we're going up there. Uh, okay. didn't I didn't get it, and I believe Councilor didn't get it, so I don't believe it. something went wrong in the dissemination of that information. Okay, we'll, we'll send you the email. Now. Hmm? What time? You got it now. Uh, they, they said lunch, afternoon. Yeah, of, we, we, uh, uh, we'll we get more information with that planning, but right now the chief is planning on having us there at noon. Yeah. So we would have to leave about an hour prior to uh, um, noon, so 11 o'clock departure time roughly. Yeah. May the 23rd. Yes, unless it's canceled. Yeah, uh, just uh, assisting uh, the rec director with the pool hanger project and uh, trying to get a result to that repair. Um, uh, we'll be preparing a grants bylaw report for council uh, upcoming since the financial plan has passed and working on the AMM June district meeting prep uh, so that again the red carpet goes out to all of our regional neighbors and uh, we want to put on a good show there. Uh, and I sent an email out just to let council know that myself and the CFO start NAMS asset, man asset management training on uh, Wednesdays and Thursday afternoons uh, for the month of May. And also something we're working on is the the I two the sorry the IT security and filing systems <coughs> project. We didn't have anything budgeted for twenty four. But we continue to talk to uh, Solutions IT, IT advisors and government frameworks on the town's filing systems and our IT security. So uh, government frameworks let us know today that they'd be willing to start providing services for payment next year. Uh, we'd still have to enter a contract. It's just a delayed payment, knowing that we're, we haven't put that in the budget. But, uh, Options like that are coming in, and that's just a project we're going to be working on with a committee at probably committee level uh, to see what our options are and where we're going to go. That's not in my report, just yeah. letting council know. <clears throat> and that's it. Alrighty. Um, just, you know, before anybody has any questions to you, that AMM Parkland district meeting that we're, ho or we're hosting for AMM. Uh, I will be meeting with some of the municipalities tomorrow just to talk a little bit about it. The meeting really is, is designed and set up by AMM. We're hosting it. They're setting the agenda. You all had a chance to see the email that came from the AMM uh, with invitation to register and, to, and then you would see the draft uh, uh, agenda on there. So I think it's going to really fill up. So there's not going to be a lot of stuff that we can add to that agenda. I don't know if we'll even be able to add, especially if the province is going to have the minister, which I believe the minister of uh, justice is going to be back here again and hosting that crime uh, safety summit for Parkland District. So 
we are going to have a, a big day that day uh, with a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about aside from what you see on that agenda. So any questions, I guess, on the report from the CAO? Go ahead, Mr. Bob. Uh, education and training is the CAO and CFO attending. Uh, Uriah Walter, who's going to be running the office while this is all going on? It's uh, virtual, so we're, we're doing it from our office. So we will be available in case of a heavy issue or emergency, but uh, yeah, I'll be in the office. Right. And so there, uh, go ahead. And they're modules, so they don't have to do them all at the same time. Correct. It's just they have to do a module per week, so they can be all staggered. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to answer the, the press's uh, uh, question earlier, that I see it here, the total mill rate uh, will be 35.474 residential and 43.602 for commercial and institutional. All right, let me get back to my agenda here. So uh, with that, then we're moving on to 8, 8.1. Whereas the town of Swan River strives to ensure the best and the most effective service for our residents and following our strategic planning objectives, we are to review current methods to determine where efficiencies could be found within operations. And whereas the town of Swan River would like to have a light, a light operational and organizational analysis with a goal of seeking out issues and opportunities for efficiency, effectiveness, and growth completed on its operations with the primary desired outcome to gain recommendations that aid in working toward achieving organizational excellence. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan River engage Ron McCullough Management Consulting to perform an operational and organizational analysis and a CEO performance review as included in the 2024 financial plan. Moved by Councillor Med, or oh, sorry, Councillor uh, Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, I think this is a an excellent adventure for the town. Uh, we do have to do a, an annual uh, CEO performance that uh, is due. Um, so we had previously had talked about th three sixty reviews um, uh, for the CEO. So this will fit nicely within that. But it also is uh, definitely interesting to know where, uh, when we assess the entire organization, where our strengths and weaknesses are. So, because um, no organization can get better uh, by not knowing their weaknesses. So, if uh, someone can come in here with an independent eye that's not part of the group, uh, point out where we are weak, we can uh, move forward and make ourselves uh, better. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, Eight point two. Resolve the count. Sorry, resolve the, the council of the town of Swan River authorized Blaine Healy to hunt crows within the town boundaries as a return to the West Nile virus and to be reimbursed as per Schedule A attached here to. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. You know what else helps with crow population? Is reducing solid organic waste in garbages and landfills. Okay. Less of it in there, less of it of attraction, they'll make home somewhere else. For the discussion, this is, some, this is not new, this is something that we've had in the past, just so that Council knows that. All in favor, it's carried. Okay. 8.3. Resolve that as per Schedule C of the building bylaw, the building inspection report be accepted and the home from 609 Church Avenue, Barrows, Manitoba, be approved to move to Swan River, Manitoba on the following conditions that it must be inspected and approved by the Town of Swan River building inspector, replace all broken windows, Address all mold in and on house. Replace soften on garage if the garage is being moved to Swan River. The home receives an occupancy permit prior to being occupied. Moved by 
Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I recommend that a resolution be resolved to include clearly that these conditions should be dealt with prior to the house being moved <coughs> versus moving the house to Swan River and then still needing to deal with the conditions. Yeah, we can add inspect and approved prior by the town if the mover and secondary agree to a mover and secondary. You agree? Mm -hmm. Do I agree with you? No, I'm asking uh, Councilor Medwood is making a recommendation to have. Um, it clearly stated that the conditions need to be met prior to the house being moved into town. Um, we, we've done this before. We've moved homes into town, uh, I think maybe just before I was on council and it didn't happen or wasn't asked. Since then, I think we've had maybe two move to town and they had to do everything prior to it moving to town. So just so that everybody knows. So we're on the question of the amendment by Councillor Medwood, uh, the mover and acceptor, uh, the seconder accept the amendment. Councillor Bobic said yes. I'm asking Councillor Powell. Um, no, I, I, if it's coming into town, right, it's basically, um, we're, we're stating that it has to be done when it gets to town, basically. It gets what's before. Go ahead, go ahead. And we've always done it prior to moving to town. So, like, if something doesn't have siding on it, we make them put on siding before they move it to town because. It's easier to do that and say, no, you can't move it into town until that's done. Okay, it's done. Now you can move it. If they've already moved it into town, then it's a lot harder to force them to put side yeah. on or fix okay. the window. So okay. that's historically okay. what we've done. So um, we have the amended, and uh, now um, Council Bocha. Well, I was just wondering, I could see definitely addressing some of the issues for sure prior, but I'm just wondering about like the moving of it. If it has a broken window and then you replace it, what happens if it shifts or jiggles and, and it breaks that window they just replaced? Like it makes sense to me that that they could do when it gets there. Same thing with soffit and stuff like that. You're moving something and you're jimmying it around. What are the chances of something like that being I, disturbed? Before you speak on that, we had something like this before that I kind of remember a little bit that it was moved, but the stuff never got done. And that becomes an issue with neighbors in a certain area that thinking, hey, why did council allow this home? If it's an RTM, they're moving them all the time. So anyway, that was my comment, but go ahead. You had something and then I'll let the rest speak after. Yeah, I was just gonna say with respect to the glass, uh, that would be up to them to make sure that their mover has insurance, the appropriate insurance. Uh, so that anything that's damaged is repaired. Mm. Good point. Uh, go ahead. Just to follow up, that's a risk that they take by asking to move a town into, okay. or a house into town. Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, basically, this discussion is irrelevant because right in the by bylaw it states that a home that's inspected outside our property, all re noted repairs have to be fixed prior to moving in. So there that is know. right inside the bylaw. Sure. So. All right, well with that, I'll ask for the vote. All in favor? For amending it? No, it was a friendly amendment, so you, it okay. was, yeah. So that was added. Has but, it been updated? But as um, Paper Memorial updated. said that it... Um, it's there. It's there already. You can update the, the motion. Yeah, it's, it's there. It's going to say yeah. carried, now it's updated. But. So I'll ask the vote again. So all in favor? Okay, it's carried. Okay, so we're at 8.4. Whereas the town approved document pre uh, preparations for the hiring of a design consultant position for the arena project and has approved the advertising and the design consult position within the town of Swan River. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River enter into an employment contract negotiations with Clayton Mahalchuk for the design consult position within the town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor Foychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. Councillor Medlin. 
Was the position advertised? And were there any other applicants or contenders? Uh, yes, it was uh, advertised. And uh, yes, another and our local architect did ask for the description. He did not send in a proposal or his resume. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.5. Result that a two year agreement be signed with OSS to provide residential recycling services in Swan River for the cost of $13.72 per dwelling per month from June 1, 2024 to May 31, 2025, and a cost of $14.23 per dwelling per month from June 1st, 2025 to May 31st, 2026. Residential complexes served by front end recycling containers will be collected and processed at a cost of $15.35 per yard per tip from June 1st, 2024 to May 31st, 2025 and $15.92 per yard per tip from June 1st, 2025 to May 31st, 2026. Move by. Councilor White, seconded by. Deputy Mayor Morio, discussion. Councilor White. It's important to note and a compliment to our administrative staff that the local recycling contractors were contacted directly in including SV Solutions OSS, MWS, and Environmental Waste Management, Waste and Conditions Canada. The GFL. So I think that's a compliment that we tried to have it handled locally, and there were no other submissions other than OSS. Okay, thank you. Thank you. For the discussion, uh, Mr. Harvey, did you have something? I, yeah, so I, I reached out to NMSM because uh, they have a transition plan uh, to take over residential recycling with the province, and uh, they've been meeting with the province. Um, 2026 is approximately when they expect to take it over, but it hasn't been approved yet. Um, so that's why I did this one for two years uh, to 2026. And then, yeah, I did advertise the start and times, put it on Merck's, and contacted those companies because uh, there wasn't a lot of response to this one. Um, and then uh, just for the carts, because they've had the carts here for so long, uh, the carts would actually decrease by 3% for the first year uh, pickup because it kind of paid themselves off. And then for just the inflation increase, it would be a 3.7% 3, 3 increase in the second year. And then for the residential that are picked up by containers, it would be a 9% increase this year, and then the 3.7% next year. Deputy Mayor Morio. So, so help me here. I, I might be confused here. So, because you have the two different rates for the same period. So the first set of rates for residential recycling services, that's our residential home blue bins on wheels, correct? Single dwelling. Yeah. And then the residential complexes, that's the bin, correct? That's for bins, so apartments that are, yeah. I think we do up to about four with that, the carts. That, okay, that's, so okay, that'd be like, a different rate then. It's a, it's a front tick exactly. with the metal yeah. bin versus the plastic residential cart. Exactly. Okay, now I see why there's the two rates. And then just to confirm that this is, um, can be terminated when the provincial program comes online? Yes, there's wording specific in the agreement uh, that it can be terminated and then in that termination clause and like it can be terminated for any other reason but it specifically mentions uh, if MSM takes over and I've talked to OSS and they're fine with that because they'll put in a proposal if, the pro if MSM, when, M when MMSM takes over. Uh, Councilor Bobbitt. So when this the RFP was put out, is this was it put out to the contractors as they could come up with a different solution or was it put out that it has to be done the way it is now? 
No, there was no requirement for carts. Uh, it was just an RFP for residential recycling collection uh, for the number of dwellings that we had. So I listed out how many single family dwellings, two family dwellings, all the different uh, dwellings. And it was just provide us with a cost for, and a proposal for how you plan to handle that. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.6. Result the asphalt uh, result. Sorry, resolved that the asphalt that has failed as a result of it exceeding its li design life on the 100 block between 8th and 9th Avenue North be removed, and the lane be maintained as a gravel road. Moved by. Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Councilor Bobbick. So when it says remain gravel road, I don't know if we should have a remain at one time in the near, hopefully near future, we could put it back to date. But to me, this looks like it's going to stay gravel forever. That's the intent that I have here. If Council wants something different, then it should be amended. That's what I. That was my understanding of what was discussed was to take it to gravel and then if they wanted it to be paid then potentially it could be a local improvement. But if it is going to be something where we're paving it, then that should be discussed with council. Because my understanding is just remove it to gravel and maintain it as a gravel road and then if they want pavement then they could go through the local improvement process if council has something other than that in mind? Well, I, personally, I would argue that point of local improvement. I don't see why we're paving, making that pay again for pavement that wasn't done properly in the first time. So that's just my opinion. But I mean, why would we make them pay again? So, but I'm just saying here, I understand that it should come out and go to gravel with a dust control put on or whatever. But at the same time, the way this reads, it looks like it could stay gravel forever. So. Um, I actually want to speak on the resolution, so I'm going to move over it and chair to Deputy Mayor Morio. Mayor, your worship. I am not happy about this one at, at all. I feel that this is uh, it's a busier back lane. Uh, it's been paved for a number of years. I'm on the same uh, page as far as uh, our Councillor Bob speaking about um, having a plan for this. If I look at a lot of the back alleys that we have downtown that are busy, and if we all of a sudden they're, they're failing their time, which some of them are failing their time, but the, you know, they've gone their life, then if we were to turn them uh, and remove them uh, from asphalt to gravel, I think a lot of businesses would be very angry with us. Um, this was not done probably the right way back when it was done. So I think there needs to be some thought put into this, and I'm asking this resolution to be tabled. Okay, so there's a request to our motion to table the motion. Um, so table it to the discussion to the next cow, and then brought back in two weeks or another time frame. Any? I'm happy with that. No second. You're happy with two weeks? Yeah. Okay, so we tabled for to the next regular council meeting, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Carried. I'll turn the agenda back to you. All right, thank you. Uh, so we'll go to 10, 10.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General Council checks number 31498 to number 31554 totaling $758,506.55 is listed on Schedule A. Payroll counts checks number 5441 to number 5445, totaling $106,924.04 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling $785 as listed on Schedule C and direct, direct deposit payments totaling $21,873.05 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. 
Yeah, I have quite a few. <coughs> uh, 31500, the St. John's Ambulance for 259261. Uh, 31501, Fletcher Tyler for 53601. 31503, Adams Contracting for 10899. 31505, Ferris Law for 219888. 31510 Western Asphalt for 44 cents. 31516 for LC Contracting Limited, 27,650. Uh, oops, sorry, I went too far. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, 31523 AMM Trading Company, $234,369.06. 6 uh, CNH Industrial Capital Canada Limited, one thousand three hundred fifty fifty cents. Three one five three four for flat and sales, uh, nine thirty three forty five. Three one five three six for high track, eight thousand seven hundred fifty seven forty six. Three one five three seven maxim truck and trailer, one thousand nine hundred forty two forty nine. 31538 OK Tire Swan River 131836 uh, 31539 Star and Times for 1507 31544 Western Asphalt for 6,903 19 31547 for Duloc Edward something Law Corporation 1,822.81, for Joe Johnson Equipment, 4,625.06. I would like the breakdown of the Royal Bank and Co-op statements, so 31551 for the Visa and 31552 for Co-op. And that was all on that particular one. Under, I think it's direct deposits, just one second. Schedule D, direct deposit payments, uh, April 25th, Pitney Works, 318160. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's our postal machine, and how are we making out on that uh, updating the software? And Westman Communications Fire Hall 22666. Would the fire board not be responsible for the communications at the fire hall now? No, we are responsible for our costs of our fire hall, according to the union. And that that the utilities are billed back to the fire board. So the invoice, like this one particularly, like it, it stays with the town, the town pays it, and then the town re recoups that cost. The third party utilities? Yes. Okay. Sorry? Yeah. And we used to get a check explanation thing. We haven't had that recently. Yeah, just due to year end and the. Just trying to speed up the meetings. It's not really, it's not required. It was a courtesy to council, but. Uh, it was a much appreciated courtesy, and I wouldn't have as many on my list then. Okay, so uh, we'll have administration answer though, because it's way too long to go through tonight. So administration will answer your questions on that. Uh, Mr. Harvey, you have a question? I just there's a few that I jotted down, but if we're just going to send an email, yeah. I'll send an email. Go ahead, tell us. So uh, lots of council members mentioned I would want to know too. So are we all getting that? Yeah, question? included with the email. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, for the discussion, go ahead. Well, and again, I thought the process was that we were to email the questions ahead of time to see if Oganita, and then email it all out so that we all know ahead of time. Yeah. If, uh, CFO Ganita, go ahead. Yes, I was directed to stop providing the check explanations. Yep, that's correct. Who's uh, Councilor Baldwin? Can we direct them to start again? Yes, we I would can. appreciate that. I, I, I also like to 
a lot. It takes away a lot of questions when you have that explanation. But again, we, uh, to explain every single check, you know, like you can't ask those in advance because you had this since last week, but go, um, but anyways, we can do some of them, but he doesn't know which ones to do, right? Right, so. it, it was to encourage council to, to be proactive. By the Friday prior to the meeting, if you have questions, or even over the weekend on the Monday, if they're not up till Friday. But I don't want to get into debate about that mm -hmm. right now, so we're on the checks, there's questions for that. So any further questions on the checks, the resolution? Being none, all in favor? It's carried. Okay. I didn't raise my hand. For what? When you said all in favor. Okay, and you're opposed? Yes, because okay. I don't have the explanation. Okay. okay, so then we'll move on to 10.2. Whereas sections 162.1 of the Municipal Act requires that every council must adopt the financial plan for each fiscal year in the form approved by the minister and consisting of A, an operating budget, B, a capital budget, C, an estimate of operating revenue and expenditures for the following fiscal year, and D, a five-year capital expenditure program. And whereas sections 162.2 of the Municipal Act requires that before adopting the financial plan, that the council must give notice and hold a hearing in respect of the plan. And whereas a public hearing has been held, therefore be, uh, the, therefore be it resolved that the financial plan for 2024 fiscal year consisting of an operating budget, a capital budget, an estimate of operating revenue and expenditures for the fis following fiscal year, and a five-year capital expenditure program be, be hereby approved. Sorry. Moved by... Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, first, I'd like to thank your administration for helping Council guide us through that process where um, we were able to present a financial plan for 2024. Uh, while it's probably not a 100% perfect plan, it is one that I think is very palatable to our ratepayers with only a 3.6% increase in costs. Uh, especially when you take into consideration all the infl uh, inflationary uh, pressures that are uh, being absorbed by everyone and the community and are at these, the, uh, this date. Um, and also with the increased uh, contract wages that we do have with our, our staff. So um, there is no extravagance expending there. It is basically maintaining the status quo with uh, uh, moving things forward and renewing our infrastructure. So. Okay, uh, Council Member. I do absolutely appreciate all the work administration has done. I do have some reservations still with regards to the line items pertaining to usage of some of the reserve funds within this budget. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Opposed? Sorry, carried. I thought you had your hand up for <clears throat> the first question. Um, okay, so 10.3. Whereas uh, subsections 306 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on April the 16th, 2024, be made to the 2024 property tax roll with a resulting reduction being $73.94. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.3. Result of the bylaw 10 2024 being a bylaw to establish a fire hall reserve fund be read a second time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Bobbitt. So, at the last meeting, the discussion on this reserve was for repairs on the fire hall, not a reserve for a new fire hall. Is that what my understanding? <laughs> it's for the 
capital repairs of the existing building. Yeah. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. He didn't raise his hand. Oh, sorry, Councilor Bob. I thought you did. So, you're opposed? Okay. Resolve the bylaw 11 2024 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, setting the rate of taxes for 2024 be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, I do. Councilor Medwood. I, I'm not necessarily fully understanding this reserve, or sorry, this um, resolution. So being a bylaw of the town of Swan River setting the rate of taxes for 2024 be read a first time. What exactly are we passing here? That's basically passing, you know, having the, 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 the financial plan <coughs> brought forward to have further uh, discussion on it because we'll have to have a second and third reading, but basically approving what our taxes will be set for 2024. Yeah, and in order to set taxes in Manitoba, the municipality must first adopt a financial plan and pass a bylaw approving. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 12, 13. Resolve, resolve that pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council of the Committee, and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have uh, human resources, so uh, moved by Councillor Bovic, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Okay, so number 15, um, items arising out of camera. One order, Your Worship. Go ahead. Uh, under our procedures bylaw under 8.6, I request that we extend the meeting by one half hour to deal with the remaining items. Uh, under the article, we're only at 10.30 to deal with one, but we have six yet to go. Uh, extend by one half hour. So that's a, that's a, you know, a motion to, uh, to extend? Yes. Okay. And seconded by... Um, Councillor Boychuk. All uh, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And then when you have anything else up there, let me know. There's six more on your screen? Not yet.
I have an issue with the wording in your resolution. Number five there, so you don't pull. We're not we're not two and three the same. there for the extension too? I uh, I have that in the pre-notes. Oh, okay. So you just can add that. So you're you're ready with them now? Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. So on Code of Conduct 1, 2024, Resolved that the third party reviewer's recommendation to dismiss the complaint 1 2024 due to, sorry, due to it in their opinion be frivolous and vexatious and outside the scope of the bylaw be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor uh, Medwood. Yes, I have an issue. And a head of council gives direction to staff that we have no authority to direct to not support, give a single second of support to a fellow council member in doing their job successfully. If that is not bullying, then I don't know what is, and I am opposed to this resolution. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 15-2, resolve the uh, third party's reviewer recommendation to dismiss the complaint to 2024 due to their opinion being frivolous and vexatious and outside the scope of the bylaw, be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. Moved by Councillor White. Question? So, well, we will move uh, Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion. How is this different than the first one? Each file. There's there are complaints. Oh, okay. Individual complaints. Ah, oh, gotcha. No, thank you. Because I said, geez, they're the same, and they're meant to be. Okay. Um, Councillor Medwood. I oppose this one as well because we have four veteran um, council members, and for them to not step up to the plate and recognize that bullying was occurring, misconduct was occurring and not speaking out but with integrity and accountability towards our code of conduct, I oppose. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. You voted in favor? I oppose. Okay. <clears throat> Resolve the third party, sorry, 15.3. Uh, Resolved that the third party's reviewer recommendation to dismiss the complaint 3 2024 due, uh, due to it, in their opinion, be frivolous and vexatious and outside the scope of the bylaw be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. Moved by 
Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medford. Once again, another veteran council member who served multiple terms and should know better that we do not have the authority on an individual or collective means to give direction to staff uh, and it should have been recognized as inappropriate and should have been dealt with accordingly. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 15-4, result of third parties review and recommendation to dismiss the complaint for 2024 due to, and in their opinion, being frivolous and vexatious and outside the scope of the bylaw, be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Although this one is a relatively new council member, being a witness to bullying and not speaking out or speaking up is still an act of omission and as per our bylaw for code of conduct is inappropriate. Okay. And further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 15-5, resolved that the third party's reviewer recommendation to dismiss complaint 5, 2024 due to it, in their opinion, be frivolous and vexatious and outside the scope of the bylaw be accepted and approved, therefore closing the file. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Another veteran council member who should know better and instead of Turning a blind eye should be standing up for the integrity of what we are as council members to do and support the code of conduct and call out misconduct and bullying. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 15 6. Is all the third parties review recommendation to dismiss the complaint 6 2024 due to it in their opinion be frivolous and vexatious and outside the scope of the bylaw be accepted and approved therefore closing the file moved by councillor Boychuk, second by councillor white discussion uh, while it's unfortunate that councillor medwick has chosen to uh, put forward code of conduct complaints against all members of council, excluding Councillor Boychuk, uh, in regards to events that occurred on the meeting of March 26th. She did exercise her right that uh, she could compile her evidence and form a complaint uh, towards, or a code of conduct complaint as per our bylaw, uh, which evidence has been submitted to a third party uh, investigator um, who has dismissed the complaints as long as with the previous ones that they are uh, frivolous and vexatious but also uh, states that uh, in totality that the, and that they be re, uh, recommend that they be dismissed but in totality uh, that they um, also comprise that there's harassment and bullying on her part towards the rest of council so I will leave it at that for the discussion, Councillor Medwood. Yes, my complaint was in, for a violation <coughs> of Code of Conduct Section 7.1, 7.7, 7 7.7b, 7.6g, and 7.6h, as well as Section 7.4a, 7.6c, and 7.2. We have zero authority to give direction to staff. The only staff member we have is our CAO. So for a head of council to advise a council member that they have gone against a council decision and accuse them of such publicly, to then tell them they will need to bring a resolution forward and then follow that up with directing three department heads to not give a single second of their time to supporting that council member with that resolution is a direct violation of our code of conduct as well as 
our duties as council members. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 16 members privileged. Councilor Bobbitt. Thank you, Your Worship. Two names come to mind. Ray Atkinson and Gordon Collin. We should be looking at hanging a plaque somewhere or naming a street. We kind of left that behind. I don't know where to go with it, but just thought I'd bring it up just at this time. Just two figures that lived and did lots for the Thomas Wan River. Uh, just I've already mentioned about the meeting on a dog license. Just uh, some facts I got <coughs> off the Lions e waste excuse me, <coughs> e-waste. Since 2018 to 2023, the Lions have collected 404,000 pounds of e-waste and converted wow. to a, a no cost to the Thomas one. So great job to those guys. Wow. They're getting up there in years. So. Also, uh, just to mention that on July, June 8th, there's Ride for a Reason. You're going to see some motorcycles go through town. There's a pancake breakfast that morning, so if you want to meet some interesting people, they're not as boring as this fish supper people. No, sorry, yeah. just joking. Um, and also, May is Motorcycle Awareness. Just keep your eyes up and don't be on yourself. Always. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Boychuk. Um, well, he touched on the fish supper, which I'm sure there's lots of exciting people there. I unfortunately <coughs> wasn't, but I did buy a lot of tickets. We did not win the boat. I'm sad about that. Um, just wanted to give kudos <coughs> to the uh, public works with the pothole patching. I've heard lots of people talking about it and, and appreciating it. And unfortunately, I think with just the lack of snow and, and the thaw freeze, I think we just have more than normal for some reason. I don't know. Um, and then another neat thing that I learned, uh, Cote uh, First Nation is having a grand opening for their arena on May 22nd. And I think it'd be an interesting uh, venue to go check out um, yeah, on that date or you know, maybe make arrangements some other time. That's about it for me. If you remind me, maybe I could reach out to the chief. I've already called. What did you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll come with you. <laughs> uh, Councilor Medwin. Um, I've been away for, I don't know, about 10 days or so on the uh, spring trade show circuit. I had an opportunity to be up in Flint Lawn and Snow Lake Thompson, made some, had some good discussions with some of the councillors up there uh, while we were hanging out at the trade shows, uh, did a tour of the crevices uh, just in Denaire Beach area. As well as they in Flint Lawn, they have a really cool walking uh, boardwalk around Ross Lake. That's actually uh, pretty impressive. And uh, up in Thompson, I stopped at the Pisu Falls. They are uh, fine, but uh, there's still some snow and ice caps. Beautiful country up there. Met, uh, yeah, had a few conversations with some counselors up there. Shared some stories. And information. It was uh, it was good. Okay, thank you, Councilor White. Well, firstly, uh, your worship, I want to thank you and, and Derek and anybody else in your team that arranged to get the premier and his team here, the community to get here and all that. That uh, other than apparently, I, I can tell. I'm going to admit it. Kevin Betcher supposed he said, "Who was the old guy asking you about the news?" <laughs> Which was me. So I texted Mr. Betcher and I said, "Kevin, what's that about?" And he says, "You should talk to your mayor." So bringing him in was awesome, and uh, that that's appreciated by the community as a whole. Uh, the other thing is, the sport fish dinner was an unbelievable success. Uh, I'm guessing netted. Thirty to forty thousand, maybe double what we usually net. Nice. Sold out a couple times. Thirty, forty extra. Ran out of French fries. We had to run to the pizza place. They're a huge corporate supporter of us. That get, let us use their equipment, and we never ran out of fish or pork. I'll tell you that much. And that money's going to kids' camps. It's going to stocking lakes. It's going to fish fixing up lakes, evaluating lakes. Uh, <coughs> it, it doesn't end. So uh, thank you all that could attend, and as you couldn't, you weren't there. In the discussion. Did your mother get her food? She did. Thank she, you very much for doing that. I didn't do it. 
Well, I know the, the, the group. So thank you guys. It's a good deal. Uh, Council Park. I'm just going to have to let this stop, but other than that, I have nothing. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, well, congratulations to the Fish and Hasna group for a well turnout and good fish supper. Yeah, it was not much enjoyed. Um, and also, just uh, so, some general comments that um, maybe some people have not picked up yet on um, if listening to the government news releases and stuff like that since post budget. Uh, that if you've watched them closely and with their announcements, you will notice that there's a trend um, where they are now shift this government is shifting away from the basket funding model, um, going back to um, per grant um, applications for funding with targeted groups or targeted entities. So, uh, just a word to the wise to administration and council and to service groups in the community that are looking for funding. Um, this this government uh, appears to be having a shift in the way they're doling out grants and funding and to specific groups or entities or special projects with uh, uh, different conditions and whatnot. So versus just the basket funding models that was from the previous government. So, uh, and then the last one is just uh, to go up in conjunction with this week with the spring cleanup. Thanks to the guys for uh, from Public Works for. Uh, picking up all the extra uh, spring rubbish that's out there that people's been collecting their yards and put it in their driveway. But uh, uh, there's been a lot of community comments and stuff like that of how much trash is out there this year as compared to previous years. So uh, it would be appreciated, especially uh, if people could all do their part and pick up the trash that's when they walk by it and put it in the bin uh, to make. Because that's one of the first things people see and comment on when they enter communities is the cleanliness uh, the community so uh, and maybe if the administration can touch out to uh, some of the businesses uh, with the fast foods and stuff like that there to maybe police up their uh, local areas um, I don't think we have a bylaw specific to it but uh, usually there's some goodwill put out by those uh, franchises that they pick up some of the stray cups and litter that's surrounding their businesses uh, where, but everybody in the community needs to do their part to make our town look attractive. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, for me, I just, you know, uh, just I, I think back to lobby days, you know, when you talk about the premier coming here. Yeah, we, I've been kind of working on that office and we got to know a few of the people that work in that office now. So this is a, a networking thing that is uh, working out for us, I think. Uh, it's, it's a big deal to have the premier come to your community. Uh, he has not been to all the communities of the province, and we're pretty lucky to have him here. And we have his ear, and uh, and that's his goal. He wants to, you know, work with all communities. So I think that's a great thing. When I was at lobby days, and uh, I had spoke with the justice minister for just a brief time, he was sitting at our table, and I told him, I said, you know, the premier's coming up to Swan River next week, and he said, yeah, I, I think I heard that, and, and I said what ministers are coming? And he said, no ministers are coming. He said, he's just coming with him and his staff. And I said, it would be really good if you came to that to that meeting because I had the Reeves want to talk to you too. And he said, well, it's up to the premier. And then just, it was like maybe 10 minutes later, the premier comes walking in the room, walks over to our table and, and we're chatting. So him and I had a one-on-one, -on -one, just really quickly touched on the crime and and, and a few other things that we talked about and, and his trip coming up. And I told him, I said, if there's one person I wish that you'd bring on that plane with you or, or town is that guy sitting over there, the justice minister. And anyways, we all know that uh, one of the people that we got to know, uh, Mr. Kelly, he got uh, bumped from the ride. So he was actually scheduled to come up to Swan River. Okay. And, <laughs> but anyway, um, we got the, the justice minister, which was great because I, I think all our discussions that we had was really high level, lots of good discussion and getting our points across. So it was it was good and I enjoyed it. And I think the Reeves enjoyed that, that time that they had with, um, uh, with the justice minister. And, and, I, and I think they really liked it because it was like, you know, it was a closed in session. They could actually kind of talk how they wanted to talk and, and get some points across. And the minister was so relaxed. I remember in other years past, we would always sit with the minister and they would always be kind of like, 
antsy or, or you know, they just not relaxed. These guys are so relaxed. Maybe because they're new and eventually maybe they'll be a little bit more on edge as time goes on. But that will come with the job. But anyways, it was a great exercise and it was lots of fun meeting these good people. You're next. Uh, just to expand on what Deputy Moyer Mori was saying, we're, we're starting to see that as well. The, we got an email for uh, two more speed signs, the digital speed signs, and the application took less than five minutes, and it's 100%. So if they are changing, hopefully it's a lot more like that. They can continue those easy application processes. And then, yes, we got acknowledgement from uh, the Deputy Minister's assistant, Rory, that he loves our data package. We're still one of the few municipalities that do that, so we'll continue to provide that data in our, our wants and in form. <coughs> and, and, you know, just last co comment on, on that meeting with the, uh, uh, well, I think the Premier and the Justice Minister was at here at the time. We didn't have the, the, the reads in the room yet. But anyway, I was talking about the GIS being a, you know, a, a, a new kind of, municipal arrangement, one of its kind in the province, but also I elaborated, like pointed out, this is a pilot project. And uh, the minister acknowledged the fact, he said, you guys are learning. Pilot project, that's what they like. And, and I really kind of hammered that out, but uh, he acknowledged it and he said, yes, you know. So anyway, it was kind of neat that he, he, uh, he said, you guys are learning pretty good, he said, or something like that. But anyway, it was a good, Good meeting. Result of this regular meeting of council will now be adjourned at 10.53 p.m. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. Well, I'd rather stay a little. We are adjourned. <laughs>